All righty. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, Ashley, thanks for uh, thanks for coming to Dallas, man. Thanks for having me. It's it's uh it's been a nice little afternoon hanging out with you. Yep, you showed me some good food, some good Texas. Uh, so I took him to Norma's to have chicken fried steak, and he didn't know what that was. He's never. No. I don't have chicken fried steak in the UK. No, no we have boiled chicken, roast chicken. We have uh, gross. deep fried like breaded chicken. Breaded, yeah, yeah. but never. You know, check chicken steak. You know what's it's funny is that it's steak. It's like a it's a beef, right? But it's just chicken fried, like like chicken that's yeah. fried, right? So yeah. they also do that with chicken, like a chicken breast. So they'll, they'll fry it the same way. Right. So you can do chicken fried chicken or chicken fried steak. Chicken fried chicken. Yeah. It makes no sense, right? <laughs> it's the South, man. Yeah. We just kind of like yeah. add shit. But those to beans, it. those beans are good. So oh, pintos, yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, baked beans in the UK, which is like a, a bean in a tomato sauce. Uh-huh. We have that for breakfast with bacon, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, your baked beans that I've had here so far are normally in like a brown sugar, really, really sweet, just mm-hmm. different. That was, that pinto bean was, yeah. Yeah, pintos, man. I think that's more of a Mexican style bean, isn't it? Or something like that. I don't know. I'm Tex-Mex. not Tex Mex, right. but I don't know. Conditioned. There's those, I've said it before on the podcast, but wasn't it like, uh, the UK like conquered the world for spices and you know, got the b- most bland <laughs> food. T- yeah, everything. So me and my wife joke about this. Uh, our typical plate is beige. You know, oh. it's beige. It's potatoes. <laughs> it's, it's like sweet corn. I know sweet corn is yellow, but you know, it's, it's generally the British plate is a beige plate. Uh huh. Um, unless you go, a good English dish would be Indian. You know, that's a good English dish or Chinese. <laughs> that's a good. <laughs> that's a good English dish. You know. Well, that's if you really enough. think about it, like America. I mean, I guess we have like wings and hamburger, like your bar food kind of thing yeah. that's here is, is, I guess, more American food. But I would say the South has a more predominant style of food than any other part of the country. Yeah. Like Southern fried foods and uh, comfort foods. Because uh, in the Northeast, I feel like it's just a, it's a version of what, you know, England is. Maybe, yeah. you know what I mean? It is New England, isn't it? Yeah. It is New England. So I've moved from old England to New England. Because <laughs> obviously I live in Connecticut now, but... Uh, but yeah, is a uh, so saying that um, Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Right? So we been to our neighbours for Thanksgiving dinner, and we said, you know, what do you have? And they explained, and they say, like we have popovers. Like a popover. What's a popover? So York, we call that Yorkshire pudding. Uh huh. You know, um, that's a it's a British thing, but it's now a New England thing, apparently. Oh so, shit! Yeah. <laughs> oh, so the Indians is what they showed the settlers. About turkey, right? Because y'all, yeah. y'all have turkeys over there. Yeah. 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 But that's our, so your Thanksgiving dinner mm-hmm. is our Christmas dinner. We okay. don't, we don't have Thanksgiving. I've, I've been saying this for years and I know that I'm, I'm really dividing the country on this, but I think that Thanksgiving food is the most bland, boring food to eat. So yeah. in, in my family, you know, we usually pick one of the two, like it, Christmas or Thanksgiving, we'll do the turkey thing. But the other one is usually Tex-Mex or Asian or right. some kind of other type of food that, that we'll cook. But I, I always say this. It's like if if turkey and all this shit is so delicious, how come there's not a bunch of uh, fast food places based on it? Doing turkey, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah. there is yeah. is Boston, Boston Market. Market. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So our, our, British, <laughs> our Brit- yeah. British food is, is a roast, which yeah. is a Thanksgiving okay. dinner, which is very beige, very bland, you know. We have a maybe. we have a place in downtown Waxhatchee where we live here. Uh, it's kind of a London style bar. Right. It has like a, is that where you threatened to take me? Well, I was talk, thinking about. <laughs> it. Oh, the pub street. Yeah, the uh, College Street Pub. College right. Street Pub, yeah. So they have like the bangers and mash yeah, and yeah. Um, a few fish other and th- fish and chips. Right. There was another one there that I I like to eat a lot. Uh, uh, is Monte Cristo? Is that more of y'all or is that a? I don't know. I think that's Maybe. American because it's deep fried, isn't oh, it? Okay. Fried. So we do we do something that's very traditional. It's like toad in the hole. So uh-huh. that is a sausage or a banger that uh-huh. you'd call it in that popover that I was talking about. In that with some cabbage, that's <laughs> toad in the hole. That's that's <laughs> pretty good. You know, that's not a bad meal as it goes. So have you had Tex Mex yet? No. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. What no, time do you leave tomorrow? Oh, one. One. one clock, yeah. Oh, we got time. Yeah. Oh yeah. We do There's some good places. Tex Mex is uh, a lot of uh, so a lot of people in California don't like Tex Mex because right. you know it's from Texas. Right. That's it. They love it, but <laughs> because it's from Texas, they hate it. Uh, you know, traditional Mexican food is is pretty good. It's yeah. a it's it's great food. 
definitely one of the top five foods of all time, yeah. in my opinion. But Tex-Mex is like kind of like throwing that southern flavor or whatnot onto a Mexican right. dish that I feel like, especially being from Texas, we're just more accustomed to uh, the, the ways things are done, like yeah. the cheeses and the chimichanga fried type stuff. All the extra little bits. That yeah, just it. like flavor stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? Which yeah. Mexican, flu- Mexican food traditionally is very flavorful, but... Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's kind of good, a good Mexican food. Yeah, yeah. Because the further north you get, I feel like the yeah, yeah. It's so more, we, it becomes more of a commodity if you have a really good Mexican. Yeah, joint. we've got some food trucks down in New Haven that I'm desperate to get to because it's supposed to be really good. And then we've got a little Mexican place right near my house, which is it's all right. Yeah, but you know the food trucks are going to be good. Well, it's like some parts of the country people have they don't have a palate for spice. Right. And Mexican food, in my opinion, is something that is better when it's got some kind of spice to it. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with Cajun food. Like Cajun yeah. food is one of my favorites as well. But you take the spice out of Cajun food and you're just got rice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah chicken um, and rice. So <laughs> there's just, I don't know, man. But funny, funny, since we're on the food and stuff, like when I think of the UK, I'm also like, my vision of it is all through movies and TV shows yep. I've watched in my life, yep. right? That, that's how, that's how, so that is how the UK view the US. For real? For, yeah, honestly, honestly, honestly. So you so, go first. And then. So my my two top that I can think off the top of my head's head uh, is Green Street Hooligans yep. and Ted Lasso. Yeah. And the, the only thing about Ted Lasso, why I love it so much, is every time they go to that little pub, the soccer, where they all watch the soccer games, yep. and they have a like a beer, I immediately want a beer. Right. That environment, that yeah. kind of like, you know, like you'll see tonight when we go to bike night. We have bars here that are like Walmarts yeah. where people go and it's just like this. It's almost like Vegas sometimes. It's a different experience. Yeah. It's not like the community bar yeah. kind of thing that is very prominent in the Northeast in yeah. America. Yeah. And I think is the way it would be out there. Yeah. So in the UK. Our, generally our towns, and this is one thing we found very difficult when we were looking for somewhere to live so uh back home everything is based around a pub or a church mm-hmm. that's how whole communities are built you know yeah. these, these small towns and obviously they grow and grow and grow but that pub or church was always the first thing there that's what made the community um when we were looking for a property in connecticut fuck there's no pubs or churches really or if there's one church there's 10 churches you know yeah. so there was no like real, there's no hub in some places um, yeah do you think which, it's which like America to. might just be so like over like I guess overpopulated, big. right? That, big. that when like people find out that they have churchgoers here, then all the churches want to be there. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with bars. Like, oh, this is the area where bars are so at. So let's all, put yeah. all the bars right there. Yeah. And that's why, like, I love that aspect of like when you go to Milwaukee and stuff like that, and Chicago and St. Louis and you know Iowa, like all those kind of like midwestern states. They they kind of embrace the whole pub small. It's yeah. it's just like part of the community, especially in Milwaukee. It's kind of a work. It's a working man's exactly. thing, though, isn't it? It's and the same for the the town that I grew up in. Uh, my side of town, you could walk to a pub, mm-hmm. uh, and then when you got into town, there were probably nine pubs within the town. Yeah, if you got to the nicer areas, then the pubs were spread further apart, and they were more of a like a country pub, which yeah. is you know a sit down. With your family and oh and, yeah, yeah, and, you know, yeah yeah so you could eat at and stuff like that more yeah, food yeah, yeah 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 but I think uh, I mean uh, you know we spoke earlier I don't drink but I enjoy the pub because it's a it's a communal type yeah thing. yeah so in the UK like uh, how did you get into motorcycling because we were talking at lunch and you were just talking about how different the motorcycle culture yeah. is in in the United Kingdom so same same thing as every everyone really is my dad used to ride mm-hmm. my dad. Uh, was a, a rocker back in the day. So we had mods and rockers. Mods were scooter boys. Rockers were motorcycles. Okay. So my dad was a, a rocker. Um, long hair, all of that. Went off, joined the army, had to cut it, came out, had a bike. You know, I mm-hmm. grew up, like my dad is my hero. So, mm-hmm. you know, so saw him on his bike. Always wanted a bike. Was never, ever allowed one. My mum was like, not mm-hmm. happening. Um and we grew up on like a like a we call it a council estate. So there's a, it's a built up area. Um, we weren't poor, but you know we didn't have all the fancy things. You know, yeah. So um, upper middle, yeah, yeah, yeah. lower so, middle, yeah, something so, like that. Yeah. So and a lot of my friends were the same. So uh, you know, one of my friends, his dad was a bin man. So and he got a little poop 
pook. You call them a pook, but we call them a pooch. Pooch fifty, like a little twist and go. Oh, like a style bike. Well, like um, fifty cc, a uh, little pit bike type yeah, thing. Yeah, that's it. Bike, so yeah. he had one of those, and we'd rip around on that. Um, and then my best friend at the time, uh, Ratty, who I don't see him very much anymore, but we're still, you know, pretty yeah. close. Um, his uncles used to race speedway and uh, grass track, so. Mm-hmm. We'd spend a lot of time in his uncle's workshops and stuff. Oh, okay. You know, uh, boiling his chains and BSA's triumphs. Um, he also had a body shop, and we'd go up there in the summer and help yeah, out. I, I really wondered, like, what the like the path was in the UK for people that were kind of like, like I guess, like you are and I am, where I'm just so naturally in a shop in yep. some kind, whether it's a body shop or a mechanic yep. shop. Like those kind of places. I mean, do is 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 the mat? It, does the most people own cars there? Because sometimes yeah. when you have a mass tra- transit, it's, it it did change though. So from I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, but 60s, 70s, a lot of families, well, 70s not so much, but wouldn't have cars because it was quite an expensive thing to have. So they might have a bike with a sidecar. Uh-huh. Um, and then the transition came that a car was more practical and they became cheaper, I suppose. So you know, so bikes became a bit more of a luxury. Um, so it wasn't necessarily, and, and we get, we can get all four seasons in a day. So it yeah. can rain, be windy, red hot summer, all in one day. So a bike's not necessarily totally practical for that. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But yeah, so it's a more, but we do have a big motorsport ped- pedigree in the UK. Um, so that's where Isn't the motorcycles come in. Top Gear from the UK, Top Gear, that TV yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It originated over yeah. here. Okay. So uh, yeah, Jeremy Clarkson. Yep. Also, Clarkson Farm that he does is a good watch. Nice, yeah. nice. It's, uh, well, yeah, that makes sense because I never – I'm a geography fan, right? Yep. So, I, you know, I always look at maps and some weird fascination with it, right? But, you know, being from America, we judge our climates based on different parts of America yep. and how far north or south they yep. are, right? You go to Key West, Florida, you never have to wear a jacket ever, Yeah, right? And you know that when you – you go to Maine, uh, there's times when, you know, you'll have, you can go swimming in the ocean, right? Yep. It's so hot out there. But then, you know, also the winter is brutal. Yeah. But if you look straight across on the, I think it would be latitude, you know? Yep. Yeah. Like, that's kind of where you guys, yeah, the southern yeah. part of your country is. Yeah. So like, it's so far north in relative to what we're used to yeah, in America. So, north, uh, so when you get up to Scotland, obviously Scotland's always gray. It's yeah. fucking bleak up there but when you get a nice day up there it's beautiful yeah because that's where you've got your space there's loads of space up there because there's no there's no work up there so uh-huh. no one lives up there really um wales is nice but it rains there a lot that's on the west coast mm. um southern so i'm just outside london really so there it was seasonal so you'd get your winter but not so much snow mm. just be cold and rain um summer you'd get maybe a month where it was guaranteed um but other than that you could you'd probably get a bit of rain that's strange that like you being so far north that it wasn't yeah. a guaranteed snow all the time yeah. it's not that's it's weird 100 percent. it's not it's, it's uh uh we've had i can remember in uh so my wife was pregnant so like 20 2010 we had uh i don't know six or eight inches of snowfall in about two hours and that ground the whole country to a standstill Oh, so it's like it is here then, um, you know? Yeah, because we're not geared up for it. Like, where I'm in CT, snow starts to snow, and the lorries are out clearing the roads, and you could go out there on your bike if you wanted to because they're just, you know... Keeps it... Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. The the infrastructure that they've got in place. Is- so that's what I was always worried about. Like, being from Dallas, and if I was ever to want to go further north, I think about winter and how bad it looks here because we're yeah. not prepared for snow and stuff yeah. like that versus uh, when I... Earlier this year, I drove up to Washington in February. Right. I think it was early March. It was snow on the ground from Santa Fe, New Mexico, all the way to Washington. Right. But the roads were dry. Everything was clean. Yeah, and I literally could have rode up there yeah. other than it was cold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so even the cold feels different than it does here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the UK, when it's cold, it's – so my son brought this up. But uh, he came over at Christmas, and it was, it was like 20 – I don't know, what's it, minus whatever it is. Like you're, you're Are you used to the, yeah, the it's, Fahrenheit, yeah, Celsius so stuff? Like minus 20 in my, my language or whatever it is. And he looked out the window and it looked like a summer's day because yes. it's dry and it's crisp. Whereas at home, sorry, in the UK, uh, 
everything's wet. Yeah. So you get you get that uh, like ice on everything and oh, just that little okay. crispiness on everything. And you feel damp when it's cold. Mm. Whereas, uh, you know, in Connecticut, when it's cold, it is cold, but it's not damp. So I wonder if based on the weather and things like that, or I'm sure based on this, but with the weather and the different types of elements like that, it kind of stunts the growth of a motorcycle oh, community within yeah. an area. And especially yeah, like you were saying earlier, that there's not a lot of space in the United no, Kingdom no. to really just Let like loose. what we take, like, I guess what we take for granted for in America is that we can go on a 10 day road trip yeah. and after, you know, a couple of hours be out in the middle of nowhere Yeah, from even New York. No, you know? So we can, we can, it would be, a, it would be a good day, but we could ride from the very bottom to the very top of Great Britain. Of England, of Great Britain, you know, it'd be it would be a good day, but you yeah. could do it. Um, you know, you get out on some of the roads out in Wales. We used to do a run to Brecon, which is lovely, but you have to you have to get on the road early because everyone's going there because mm. the roads there are nice, you know. So everyone wants if it's a nice day, everyone wants to ride those roads. Yeah, you know, so you just get choked up and then you miss out on that ride. There's no. Um, like here, when I went up to the I went up to the East Coast Jam earlier in the year, and you get up to the Catskills and and off through like Litchfield area and Connecticut and stuff, it's beautiful. And you can ride for thirty miles, forty miles. You don't see another vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's it's just it's heaven, really. Yeah. Um, coming from a you know the most of the UK, I would say comparing it to here is like a, a city and the outskirts of the city. suburbs. The, yeah. yeah. Um, even country. Yeah. Is, you know, Oh, that makes sense. Um, I, you know, as someone that's I, like I said, I've never been out of the country yet, and um, that's one of those things. I, I do want to ride a motorcycle in in yeah. in the UK, and especially like Scotland and stuff like that. Yeah. If that's so ever there's, there's some lovely there. You know, I'm putting Scotland down. There are some lovely routes up and around there. And uh, when my friend Dave comes over, you should talk to him because he did a tour uh, around the whole of Great Britain, keeping the sea on his left, I believe. Mm -hmm. So he went. You know, clockwise around. Yeah. You know, so he'll be able to tell you exactly where to go. Nice. What about, have you have you gotten a chance to ride in any other European countries? Other than um, so, ridden, no. I've driven in a lot of European countries. Okay. Um, I worked events for a little while, so we'd go to, like, the MotoGP in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, our biggest client was Monster Energy. So I went out to Monaco for them. We used to set up a lot of FMX stuff and that sort of stuff for them. Um, so we would do do that sort of thing. So I've driven, and yeah. I'd, uh, one place I'd love love to ride is actually uh, to ride from the UK to uh, Monaco, go through Lyon and stuff. That you know, it's Monaco's in uh, Monte Carlo, so it's it's right down near uh, Cannes. Is that Italy? No, it's oh. France. Just it's, but oh, I don't okay. know how. I'm, like going know, into yeah. Spain. We need a map. It's a, so it's a principality. So like Monaco's kind of Monaco's a thing, and then Monte Carlo is it's kind of its own thing. So it has its own police, and it's it's got a prince. And I'm not I'm I'm not the best one for yeah yeah you know. But yeah, it's it's a uh, and the roads there are lovely because obviously they have the Grand they have the Grand Prix there. Okay. Um, so the hill going down into Monaco is really nice, and mm. you know the the road surface. It's manicured, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like New York. So when does like you know you're <laughs> not like New York? Yeah. <laughs> when does like how old are you? Whenever you start to kind of get into like street bikes more, right, and so street bikes. Um, so I used to run around on my mate had a little one two five. He'd ride it to school. I'd jump on the back or I'd take him on the back or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Ratty that I was saying about Paul, uh, he came away from bikes a little bit and went more into banger racing and stuff and then went back to bikes later. And it wasn't really until my late 20s. Mm -hmm. um, I'd always loved custom bikes and always loved motorcycles because of the stuff with my dad and uh, one of my friends, Timmy, who's, who's a crosser I used to ride. His uh, dad used to work for the post office and uh, he used to bring back Easy Rider magazine. Oh, okay. And we'd sit and... I know. was going to ask you, like, what was, were some of the influences yeah, so that, you know, if you don't have this to go down to your local bike night and see, yeah. like, how do you consume? Yeah, we, we never had that. You, it was very rare to see a custom bike. A custom bike was something that really, uh, you know, we don't want to go down that road, but, like, it was a club thing. It mm. was, you know, the clubs had the nice bikes, but you wouldn't ever see them out and about. Yeah. Um, or very rarely. I mean, 
I think maybe different areas if you went further north or you know then yeah. maybe you might see a little bit more of it but in the south where I was you, it wasn't a big thing mm. um, but yeah Easy Rider magazine was great uh, obviously you know being around the speedway and the grass track filled me full of that you know that adrenaline thing you mm. want to the speed I got into cars yeah it was easy to get into we used, we did the uh, all the imports Similar sort of stuff. Too. I mean, y'all had the good imports, so y'all would get like the because I grew up loving like Nissan Skylines and right, yeah. So y'all yeah. had those there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had those early because um, obviously our steering wheels on the other side. Yeah. Um, but we did. Uh, so my wife, she had a, a you call it a Miata. So mm-hmm. we had a Unos, and that was turboed and everything. Yeah, that was, that's what all. That's what I hated is that uh, back in the days when I was in the imports, all the good shit would go to Australia and the UK. Yeah, and New Zealand. In yeah. New Zealand, they would get the normal badass motor turbocharged, yeah. and then we'd get this like toned just down, toned down, yeah. like you know, mini truck kind of engine. Yeah. <laughs> Put yeah the, the closest thing that we could get is from Canada every now and then. Yeah. Could be yeah. some. What about the Subarus? You must have had the Subarus. So though, Subaru was they, like they slipped in because of the the um, the dikes. You're right. Not well, the, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. So Subaru was big for us because we had Pro Drive. Pro Drive yeah. was literally thirty minutes from from us. Yeah. Um, so we'd have all the Pro Drive, like the, the, you know, Rally Team and stuff. Um, Colin McRae and yeah. Well, Rally influence. the you know the Rally stuff was always seemed like it was big and yeah, and massive. You, yeah, 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 generally massive. But yeah, so uh, but then going on from that, so then um, I lost touch with my uh, my friend Ratty for a little while because. Uh, I don't know what you want me to talk about here, but I, so I used to tie box, right? Mm-hmm. Um, at a professional level. Yeah. Professional level. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot of shit tonight and you got my back, right? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old now. <laughs> um, so, so I took, I took up karate at seven, kickboxing at 10, finished my karate at 12, whatever. Kickboxed and tie boxed from 10, uh, finished competing when I was 28. Mm. Um, so, when I got out of that, it wasn't when I got out of that, but it was easier to get into motorcycles when I didn't have that five nights a week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Five mornings a week, you know, um, because it takes up a lot of your time. Um, yeah, all the training. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So everything in between. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, when I came away from that, I started a gym. So I coach, coach fighters and stuff, which we've still got now. Um, but it freed up time. Mm hmm freed up a lot of time how does that work with you being here in america now did you bring a version of your gym here no no no. so i've got uh one of my ex-fighters and actually my my best my best friend my uh ride or die should we call him yeah he's uh he's running the gym nice so he's carrying it keeping it going because it's only a small it's a small affair yeah Yeah, it's not a big uh a big uh, warehouse gym you know Um, but we breed a good quality of fighter so where where is it still mainly just Muay? Uh, yeah, is it Muay Thai? Yeah, Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. D- do you have any people that cross over into like more of the mixed martial so arts stuff? We used to, back, you know, back in the beginning, we would do that um, because when I came out of kickboxing and Thai boxing, it was kind of a politics thing, really. Mm-hmm. In as much as I felt like um, I'd been fighting people at the top level for however many years, I was in the top ten rankings for all of my professional career. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a bad run. I yeah. got I got knocked out in a fight, um, which was supposed to be a warm up fight for another fight. So that kind of yeah. fucked out really. Um, but I still fought, which I shouldn't have done because you know. So you're not allowed to fight within like thirty days or forty five days of being knocked out. Uh, I did because I had a obligation to do so. Yeah. Uh, got not touched. I got hit, but you know, I wasn't. I got mm-hmm. knocked out again. So. Um, I went to rematch and this and that and everything else and politics thought I'd earned it thought I'd deserved it uh, didn't happen so I went down the MMA route for a little while um, I loved it never fought um, I just couldn't get my head round I can stand up and beat the shit out of you stood up but as soon as you take me down I'm fucked <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like yeah. I just never grasped that yeah. that little bit of it it's just there's so much to that whole ground game and and coming from a stand up, yeah, I was I was good at that and it came naturally to me. But but that, that ground game is something else. Yeah, yeah, I can um, imagine just bringing all those different disciplines that are kind of yeah. like, you know, we were talking about earlier, like the you become the jack of all trades, if yeah. you will. But how do you really become a master of all? That's it. I mean, know? the first, I mean, I know you guys 
you follow UFC a little bit oh, and, yeah. and stuff. So, like George Saint Pierre was the best one to do it first time round, and he was the mixed martial artist, wasn't he? Because he had a good ground game uh, from his wrestling side, you know, a good jujitsu background, and and he could stand up. Yeah, uh, he blended. You know, he wasn't the best yeah, at everything, did, yeah. but he did everything on a good level. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Not a fun fighter to watch, though. No, no, no. You lay on top of you and yeah. just um, score points. Yeah, but uh, but no. So so um, yeah. When I came away from sort of doing that, I uh, actually I was looking to get get a bike and you know get going. So I went down to local custom shop, uh, Mad Motorcycles at the time. I walked in. No, he was sat there. My mate Ray. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. last so, touch with him. Yeah, yeah. So we got chatting and stuff. And um, I mean, there's a lot that happened in between then that uh, kind of skipped over. But like, he used to bang a race and stuff. So I'd crew for him and, and yeah. stuff like that. And so that would be where where my mechanical mm-hmm. you know, came from. Um, so yeah, so he was down there, and uh, yeah, we hit it off and got chatting and stuff. Um, he was part of a bike club at the time. Um, I started hanging around with him for a little bit, you know, picked up the bike club thing. Yeah. Just as a, more really because I was mates with him, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it just, the way it, way it worked out. Uh, and then a spot opened up at the shop. He knew that, you know, I was capable. So I went down and started helping out down there and doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of, you know, gone from there really. That it was the, from there. yeah, that was the kind of start, start of it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, th- w- like, the one thing about motorcycling that I think doesn't get talked about enough is how much fun it is when you do it with some of your friends. Yeah, 100%. Right, yeah. and that's that's really where the whole concept of a club really kind of comes together. But it, it makes more sense when you do have somebody you're close to connected with yeah. that you kind of go into something like that with. Like, you have a, a another connection to, to this thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Then, like... I saw y'all at a bike night. I started hanging out, and then two weeks later, I call you brother. Yeah, no, and, no, it's, it's, you know. yeah. You got to have that. You know, uh, we were we were lifelong Something friends else from together. a young, yeah, yeah, from a young young. You know, we did the whole skateboarding, BMXing, you know, RC cars, mm. uh, everything. Ever, you know, all our young age. Yeah, was spent together doing yeah. stupid shit. You know, um, chopper bikes and grifters, and you know. Kind of speed yeah, he used to ride I, I think I mean but at the same time I've, I've always tried to tell people like you know coming up on 20 years riding and being within the motorcycle industry like you have to pivot certain times and when I did yeah. the club thing it was the best thing ever until it wasn't yeah, yeah and then it just didn't fit yeah anymore with me my life and where I wanted it to go yeah. where I wanted to go with the type of motorcycling I wanted to do the same thing whenever I transitioned from sport bikes to Harleys. Yeah. I had felt like I've exhausted everything within sport bike world that was interesting to me. Yeah. Or that I could yeah. afford yeah. to do, right? Yeah. Like I I'm I wasn't I'm not that good of a rider to go out on a track and compete on that level. Yeah, I didn't have the money to go even just dabble in it. Yeah. You know, like I I I felt more confident to go try to do a couple of wheelies on a sport bike than I did to go get out on a track. You know, like Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, it's a and different, uh, different. It's a different cup of tea in it because it's not just, it's not even just the bike. You know, it's transport, tire changes, and there's so much cost, so much time, so much yeah. stuff that goes well, into it. I think that for people that are, you know, how do you how do you stay connected to a hobby for 20 years, right? Yeah. And sometimes I think you have to be willing to go outside of the original way you came into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know, wh- yeah. whether it's like. You got into the bikes, then you got into custom bikes, or yeah. you got into custom bikes and then just got into the normal bikes. Like yeah. maybe you didn't want to go down that route anymore. You just wanted to go ride and travel or whatever the case may be. And I think that, you know, you had mentioned it before about like being, you know, into all the, the martial arts and whatnot. Like how do you just like you had to transition out of that and find yeah. another passion yeah. or another hobby to kind of keep you going. Yeah, because I think for you know, for what you do, for what I do, you know, when when you do something like we do, you have to be uh, obsessive about it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You just it's time. You know, yeah. I was I was good uh, uh, tie boxing because I put the effort in. Yeah. You know, um, I've had so many kids come through the gym that look good, could be good, very very promising, but don't put the effort in. Yeah. You know, it's that whole ten thousand thing. You know. Yeah, ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, it. it <sighs> 
yeah, I mean, you're opening up a can of worms right there because the same thing like this weekend, you know, I put out a story. I'm not trying to publicly go too wild with it. Like, hey, you know, we're kind of having a shop hang working on the FXR. Yeah. And every fucking day there's some somebody in Dallas that hit me up about how they want to get into this world. Right. And I'm like, why? I mean, maybe you didn't see it. That's fine. Yeah. But being like just putting yourself around something is yeah. sometimes the only thing that you're capable of of doing in that time yeah. like say if you really want to get into fighting you don't have yeah. the money to go join a gym what would you do i i i, would, I know me i would probably start becoming in, like hey man can i just sweep can can i yeah come around can i just, just come around yeah you know? I, i'm not going to get in there i just want to see it i want to yeah. i want to hear it i want to smell yeah. it i want to be a part of this yeah and you know i don't want to get in anybody's way i don't want to be a nuisance but i want to find a way to be a part of this you know you i hear people all the time like oh i want to be you know a photographer or or I want to get into this thing but they don't you know they want to do it they want they enjoy saying that they enjoy yeah. the the way it makes them feel about the want but the action you know is never as gl as uh as glorious as the yeah. thought of wanting to do something yeah. right the action is going to sit in a sweaty gym yeah to try to hopefully kiss somebody's ass long enough to get an opportunity yeah. or you know, the same thing with photographer. It's like you got to go be a, a, a damn photographer's bitch for the most part and carry yeah. around his shit or whatever the case may be to just be in the place to yeah. capture some but of that's, that knowledge. That's that apprenticeship, right? Exactly. That's what it is. Um, you you have to you have to put yourself out there, you know, and... and See, that I've been dealing with this a lot with my son lately because my son's mother is on the cusp of, like, she would rather pay for lessons for him for the things that he wants. Right, okay. But in my in my opinion, and, and this is with a grain of salt, I'm 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 married to this in a very loose fashion. Yep. But when you pay somebody for lessons, then you have an expectation from them as if they owe you something. Yeah. And obviously you do because there's a transaction, know, right? This. Yeah. Yeah. But the passing of knowledge to one another is something that the other person's supposed to gain from you. Yeah. Not I owe you. Yeah. Right? So the, the way the apprenticeship stuff used to work, it made sense. And it made sense for like more lucrative things like tattooing to where it made sense that you paid that guy to learn because that's something you can immediately go into making decent money doing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Or how many, how many years would, would somebody put into like doing a, a very, very dying craft of, you know, like you've heard of like the boot makers and yeah. the and the different things that are kind of like gone. You know, even sign painters are becoming yeah, a thing right. of the past. Yeah. So I feel like there's this there's this thing that everybody seems to have these days, which is money, but they don't have time. And yeah. the time is the valuable thing that I put in that I want to see you and do the same. Yeah. And when I That's... feel now, don't get me wrong, like I've uh, I have always done i've done this a lot if if you if you're in dallas or you live here and you know how to do something i want to i really want to know how to i'll offer to pay you i'm like hey man can i pay for just a chance to come hang out in your shop i won't talk i'm not yeah. gonna ask questions i just need to see yeah and i've done that before that's how i met ryan townsend okay. because i offered to pay him to let me watch him airbrush right. because he was doing something that i've airbrushed long enough to if I could see him do it, then I can do it. Yeah. Right. Do you learn? So I learn better from visually seeing something. Yeah. Yeah. Than, I do too. Then if I've got a text, read something, it will take me two, three, four times. I'll have to read it, read it, read it. Cause I'll read every word, exactly. every single word and then trying to understand what I've just read. Yeah. But it's, it's a, a, yeah. If you can have a bit of both, it's like, if you've got someone that can show you something, you know, and read then. Exactly. I think, I, I'm definitely more of a visual learner, yeah. but I think that because of the age I am and you're a similar age as well, we kind of, we kind of, we hit adulthood before like uh, YouTube and social media. Yeah. So I remember the first day I bought my first motorcycle, I went to Barnes and Nobles and I bought motorcycling for dummies yeah. uh, and a, a handful of other books because at the time, other than magazines, that was the only thing I could think of that would give me any kind of insight as to how to do this. Yeah. And I didn't grow up in a place where I was around other bikers. Like, like I'm the one in my world that took the bike path. Right. So, um, you know, I worked in a bike shop, but then again, like I was kind of too embarrassed to, to go in there and ask these oh, dumb scary, questions. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to educate myself on certain terminologies and things to be able to, 
come into it with some own investment on my my end, right? Yeah. And that's I talk about this a lot on the podcast. It's like when people ask me how to do certain things with paint, I know the level of investment you put on by the question you ask me. Yeah. Therefore, it garners a different response from me. Yeah, because how do you paint? Yeah. That's a very broad question, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> how do you That's, knock people out? <laughs> yeah. The same simplistic. Thing. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there is a science behind it. There is. Yeah. But it's the same thing like the way that you kind of uh, took the opportunity. You humbled yourself to take the opportunity to reach out and do present the email for the FXR tour build yeah. the way that you did. Yeah. And I know that like when Justin and I came up with that idea of doing a garage builder and asking people to submit their stuff through an email, I knew that that was going to cause maybe not problems, but it was going to cause some people weren't going to take it seriously. Yeah. And a lot of people that were really good, that they probably, they were actually some favorites of some of the other builders. Yeah. They didn't try yeah. on that. Yeah. I, I, so from my end, I can see, I'm not stupid enough to think that I was the best applicant as in builder wise. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, I know my, I know my capabilities. I can build a good bike. I can finish a good bike, you know? Um, but I think what I have is passion. Mm -hmm. I wanted to fucking do this. When I, when I sat on a Sunday morning and watched that podcast, I was like, you know, you guys were talking. It was like, right, you know, you're going to do this. You're going to write it, take it to Durango. You're going to ride here and here. You've got to be able to build a bike. You've got to have a frame. I was like, right, I've just moved here, so that's going to make me interesting. Jace knows I can finish a bike because, mm. you know, I've I've had a dealing with you on you know mm. in the past. Um, I've got an FXR frame that I bought to build anyway. I've yeah. got all this shit. It's like, it's fate. It's got to be me. See, the other thing that was also an important thing was finding someone that we felt like, and this is where the judging comes in, yeah. we felt like was at a level where they can follow through. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that want to be builders or they want to be this, but... The problem is, is it for Justin and I, we're putting together almost like a show, if you will. Yep. And if half of our applicants or our builders don't make it, they don't show up or they don't take it seriously, then all of a sudden now this thing has no merit, has no yeah. purpose. Yeah, it so, impacts on you. Exactly. It's, and it's, now we have nothing. But yeah. we got lucky with the builders that all came on board. They've all put in effort this entire year. The best effort they could. I, I'm I'm also yeah, in that yeah. same boat where I've I've missed my Friday. I missed last Friday. You know, but we've been putting out yeah. so much content. I'm yeah, like, course, you know, yeah. fuck Friday. I'm there's, doing it every there's day. Midweek stuff. There's yeah. there's every day, every day. But the thing is, it's like there's certain there's so many things within this tour that I think that once it's all said and done, we've had a great time having a a, a group chat building yeah. bikes. And you've got to you know, a lot of us got to hang out in Born Free together. Yeah. You got to hang out with some of the guys at Indian Larry. Yeah, we got to hang out in Sturgis a little bit together with some people there's all these things that are going to come together but in two weeks we're going to be riding together oh, no. we're, we're going to be, be spending a lot more time together yeah. on in much more close personal yeah. quarters um to the point where i'm interested if it's anything like the rest of my life in motorcycling it's going to be interesting to see how this group this this group of people carry on the rest of our careers yeah. in motorcycling and and, and grow yeah you know? i mean definitely going to grow but at the same time like we're always, I think we'll always have that connection of yeah. that thing. It, yeah. Obviously, Justin and I want to continue the FXR tour. That's something we yeah. want to happen all the time. It is scary for us because next year, him and I aren't building a bike. So we got to rely on 10 other people. I think next year, though. So this year, I think it's been done so well. Mm -hmm. And the guys have really, really got on board. And I, I I'm lucky. I'm like Willy Wonka with his golden ticket. You know that. <laughs> that's that's you know. So I'm in here doing the best I can do. And every every time you guys put up a update, it's like, fuck, I've got up my game now. You know. Yeah. And I can build a bike. I can. Not being, I can build a bike. You know. Um, but there's levels. Yeah. And everyone this year is really showing up. This first year, like uh, Corey said, you know, you can only do the first time once, right? Yeah. It's always you know. Um, so, but next year it's set up for those guys, mm -hmm. you know, because as a format, you know, they know what's going to be expected of them. Yeah. So they know whether they can commit to it from the off because they know what at the end, you know, it's not, it's not just 10 FXRs that have been thrown together. Uh, you know, I love stock paint and I love, you know, original bikes, but it's not just mm -hmm. one that you've cobbled together in your shed. It's not, it's yeah. not that thing. These are 10 custom bikes. 
yeah, 10, 10, 10 ideas that you've had that you want to try to make a reality. Yeah. You know, yeah. and your bike you've been talking about forever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I don't want to make this about my bike. No, no, so, no, no. But, but you know, yeah. you, you've been talking about yours forever. Justin, uh, my machinist, has done a load of stuff that he's wanted to do yeah. for however long. You know, Rennie is absolutely smashing it, that boy. Yeah. Clem is. Clem's is a. Uh, he's he's shown his quality now. Yeah, seeing seeing like the way that it's coming together, the Clem. I mean, all Clem. Everything I've ever seen from Clem has always been clean. That's why I've always been yeah. a fan of him and his brand and and the, my time with them in New York. Uh, the first time I ever went, just seeing yeah. their bikes, they're just they're all dialed. And yeah. you know, we put this tour together. I wanted to find people that I felt like really deserved the light shined on them. And even though right now the light that we're trying to shine on people is produced by us as a group of people. Yep. Next year, the light will be coming from outside the group in. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. If that makes sense. But, you know, with you in the tour, like the, one of the main things, the scariest thing for us is making sure people commit, like I just mentioned. But it's not just like you have 10 months to build a bike, which most people never get that no. <laughs> in building a bike. It's also depending on if we do the same route next year or a different route or the hopefully i think everything will work out well with born free that it will stay yeah the end point of our tour you gotta you gotta show up on the other side of the country almost yeah so from I'm, connecticut so i'm uh partly my own fault but i'm 2400 miles away from durango so i would be 2200 but i'm going to stop in at clockworks mm. on route um, because I want to, you know, they've been good to me. So I want to go up and I want to see Shelton and, and, and uh, Brian and, you know, uh, and go and have a look. Yeah. But it's 200, it's a 200 mile detour. It's, you know, but it's 2,400 miles. Yeah. So this week I've gone out, luckily. So my lovely neighbor uh, upgraded their vehicle. So they bought a, a new Ford Explorer. So I've bought their Nissan Pathfinder. Um, Lovely 2012, 120,000 miles, full service history. <laughs> um, so I'll be chucking a trailer on that. Damn. And then um, I've got Aaron that I spoke about earlier who runs Thai Boxing Gym. Uh, he's coming over and my son Bailey are coming over. So I'm going to load my orange FXR yeah. and the one I'm building for the tour into the trailer. We'll drive to Durango. Uh, Bailey will ride. Obviously, I'll be riding. And then Aaron will follow down nice. with the truck and the trailer. And then on the way back, he'll go straight to, not Fort Worth Airport. You've got another airport that's closer to, uh, uh, Lovefield. Yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna get a plane from there to New York and then fly home. And then me and my son are gonna drive back from, from uh, Born Free. Born yeah. Free. Yeah. So and it's it's about sixteen hundred miles, I think, from from here to there. Yeah. yeah. So, but the road trip, it's, it's it's the road trip as well. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. to spend. So I'm doing. I'm gonna leave on the twelfth to get into Durango on the 16th. So I've got four days with my son and my best mate. Yeah. It's going to be cracking on the road, you know. It's <laughs> See in America. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hey, you're going to be going through some good areas too. You're going to yeah. be you go through Sturgis. If you, I mean, Mitchell, I mean, yeah. it makes sense to go straight through Sturgis as long as yeah. the weather is decent enough. Yeah, so I'm I'm so pumped. And my uh, my mate Aaron, he, uh, like, he never rings anyone. He never answers the phone to anyone. He never, like, he just does what he's doing. But he's rung me every single week about this thing, you know, forever more. He's so fucking pumped about this. Nice. Um, yeah. It's, it's what about good. the other guys from? Uh, the yeah, so we've got, I've got about 12 coming over, I think. So I've got um, Andrew, who you know, who yeah. you've done a paint job for. He's coming over. Uh, they're going to meet him and my best riding buddy, Dave. They're going to meet us in Durango. So they've rented bikes from uh, Eagle Riders. Okay. So they're going to come down and do the 1,000 miles. Nice. And then I've got my dad. He's coming over. Yeah. 70 years old, still fucking rides. Oh, dude, that's um, badass. Yeah, so there'll be, at some point, I want to try and get out, me, my dad, and my son, you know, all riding That'd in the US. Fucking. That's got to be surreal, man. man. Yeah, can't wait. So, and then I've got uh, my buddy Peter, who bought my Blue Diner. Mm -hmm. He's coming out. With yeah, because his... you left that one there oh, to no. sell it. Yeah. yeah that was that the one that was in the magazine? Yeah. Nice. It was a sad, sad day, but... It's still, it's still in the circle, yeah. you know, so it's, it's good. And he rides it. He's put, I don't know, 4,000 miles on it since he's had it. Nice. Um, which is, that's good mileage for the UK. I know out here that's not, but, mm. you know, that's good that mileage. That makes sense, yeah. Um, and I've got a couple, of, a couple of other buddies that are coming out as well. Uh, Adam that come out to um, 
So we did Biketoberfest back in October, mm -hmm. and uh, he came out for that. And then one of my dad's buddies, Andy's coming out. So we've got a few coming out. So it should be good. Um, so we'll write everything down so that you can understand what we're saying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a <laughs> we'll have a little. Uh, I just board. I can't wait to everybody ask you like, Australia. Yeah, that's it. That's what I get. That's what I get. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like Australians get the UK like yeah. UK. And it's yeah. always backwards, right? Yeah. Australians are uh, criminals, though. Eh? <laughs> criminals. I mean, it's criminal that's, island. Yeah. That's where they went on it. Um, no, that's that's rad, man. Look, that's to me like th this whole story. How like you're capitalizing on this opportunity, whether or not it's like some big thing that makes your brand blow up or whatever it's yeah. it's the point that like the experience that you're creating not just with the other builders but with like your your dad and your son yeah. and your friends from the uk and like that's to me like that's rad that's yeah. a better story it's, it's, to experience in my it's, opinion uh, so for and, and partly the reason why i'm doing this so going back to my tie boxing days again is that you know we're pre-youtube pre all of that so i've got I've got boxes full of trophies and stuff, but I've got very few pictures. I've got very few, you know, I haven't got. Yeah, we just know? we just did a tour of Rick Fairless's place and you saw all the yeah. pictures of his life just everywhere. And 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 that to me is amazing. So so it's it's since I've come here and sort of through COVID it started. When I whenever it was I started on Instagram, I was like, Right, well, I need to start cataloging this stuff and, and making memories because yeah. one day I'm not gonna be able to ride. You know, I'm gonna be an old man sat in a chair. But I'll have them fucking yeah. them stories, you know. One of Do you the remember best, that time we all went to fucking one born the, free. <laughs> one of the best videos on YouTube is from Scooter Tramp Scotty. Yeah. And uh, for those that He's don't good. know, Scooter Tramp Scotty's literally been living off of his motorcycle in North America for the last since the ninety two, yeah. I believe, thirty something years. And every once in a while, he does this video where he has these these pictures, just a stack of pictures, almost like he puts them in a plastic bag and keeps them in his pack. And he'll just go through, and some of them are multiple different women that he's kind of had a short relationship with. Yeah. or And he just talks about the experience and the story with that picture. Yeah. And for me, sitting there, just I've seen it. I, I could watch the video like once a month, and I'm it's like I love that. I love yeah. that aspect of being connected to – your own personal history, but also like out there still making it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, it's always nice when you have someone that wants to actually hear about it, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it yeah. makes me think about those old men or old, older people. Like when you kind of encounter them in like a store or something, they, they get a little chatty and yeah. you're like, Oh man, I gotta go, you know? Yeah. But I know. Yeah. Yeah. Just having someone to talk to, you yeah. know? Yeah. I've had, I've, I've, I've had a couple of them since I've been here actually. For and it's, yeah, but you know, uh, give them the time. Because yeah. they ain't got much longer left, you know. Yeah. And if it's if that's all it takes to brighten up their day, is listen to their story and, and they're interesting. Old yeah. people, they do have some good stories. Yeah, they do. Another thing is like it, it's a good it's a good uh, learning thing for you to slow down sometimes. Yeah, you know, you kind of talked about earlier the obsession, right? With yeah. with things. I mean, I, I've kind of within the group chat and you and the people, Corey, I've, me and Corey have been talking a lot over the last couple of weeks. A whole year, actually, but more yeah. so the last couple of weeks. Um, dude, my uh, I've never been this obsessed about a anything, right? Yeah. And I've, I've been trying to find ways to articulate it, which I don't really have the words right now to really explain it. Because also, I don't know if this is just like some kind of condition. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this could actually be really bad. Um, but I can't sleep. Yeah. As soon as I lay my head down, I, my brain goes a thousand miles an hour about... You know whether it's the the project at hand or some some projects circling this time yeah. frame right now that I need to get done and I you know have ideas for, or YouTube videos or podcasts like it just doesn't fucking end right, right now and it's uh it feels good but it also it's wearing me down really yeah. quickly like the lack of sleep and but you know if you can if you can make it through till December. Yeah. Hopefully things will slow down for you then or not. Well, I think that things will slow down as soon as we hit November, you oh, know. Okay. I mean, they'll slow like the the bike thing will be done and that that's a big time suck right now yeah. because of you know, just the that bringing it's, it together yeah. aspect, but also the um just you know, not to not to kind of like well, we also are putting on the tour, but there's also that where there's yeah, a little bit of anxiety w wanting you not, said you were going to deliver something. Yeah. You've yeah. got to deliver it, haven't you? Else, what happens? Exactly. Like, yeah. So yeah. I just want, you know, like, I want it to 
you know, I want it to be everything that I've dreamed it up to be, you know, and I put all these things in play in place over this last year and just there's always anxiety as it's just like when you're hosting a party, yep. you know, you, is the house cool? Do I get enough food? Come? You know, <laughs> it's like, I'm not worried about, are they going to come? It's like, oh, are they going to have a good time? Yeah. yeah are yeah, they going to yeah, go home? Yeah. It's like, that was yeah, the Are they going to go party. away talking about it? Yeah. And, and like, when's the next one? Exactly. You know? So it's, it's that kind of anxiety going into it. Right. And, um, and I'm, I wish I could be more nonchalant, like the guy that just like is what it is, but I'm, I'm just too, yeah, but no, no, too controlling is what it is. No, in my opinion, no one that ever had that attitude ever did well in life. You know, you've got to be got good luck. <laughs> you've got to be, if you want it, you got to go out there. Yeah, yeah, and get it. You got to get after it. You have. I'm um, trying. I'm trying. But you know, the, the other thing is like, I think the other night, I, it might have been last night or the night before. You know, I was up here two o'clock in the morning, coming in at two o'clock, not yeah. going home at two o'clock. I but, saw your green light on instagram this morning uh-huh. when i was when i was uh getting up yeah it I, was like i got to the shop this morning know. at 1 30 a.m and i worked till six yeah so went that home was about four four a.m I, yeah yeah and then um yeah I'm, I'm i'm working on some other projects but i'm also like really just eye fucking this bike and yeah. making sure that i'm okay with every little detail and then I start seeing something that Matt might have did for me on this bike or something that Corey did and and this like feeling of appreciation for this bike yeah. and how it's coming together like starts to kind of overwhelm you. And I'll sit there and do this. I'll I'll find some thing and I'll get ready to make a post because it's like finding a way to show your appreciation is kind of different nowadays, right? Yeah. It's you've you've got to kind of give them a shout out. You've got Yeah, to, it's like a, a shout yeah. out has to be made other yeah. than like not saying that they wouldn't be okay with just a genuine, hey man, thank you for this. Yeah. But it's like, how do I do more? How do I? How do I? Sh- like, no man, I really mean it. Like, yeah, how do you say that? Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to because it's it's a given that you have to say such and such did this. It's great, thanks. You know, yeah. that's kind of like a that's a staple. You've got to do that. But yeah. how do you? I know exactly what you mean. You know, showing showing that you actually appreciate because a lot of time and effort goes into yeah this everything. stuff. Um, and and you know you can see from looking at your bike now, uh, the stuff that you've done, Corey's done, and Matt's done. They've not just done it because you've asked them to do it. It's not just been done because it's a job that's getting paid for. Mm-hmm. It's a transaction. They've done it because they wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a. You can see that love's gone into it. Or oh yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. It's it's everything's just right. Yeah, which, uh, yeah. You only get if someone wants to do it it makes it makes the project better i mean it's like when you see something going on and you want to be a part of that project yeah. you know what i mean and i hope that like all the people i mean not just you know Corey and matt have probably put in the most collectively uh, yeah. obviously of, of helping out with the project but there's been lots of you know help from you know guys in our tour you know yeah, from yeah. easy yeah. rider to to my machinist gave me a bracket right <laughs> yes that's copy paste still print. still had to still had <laughs> to modify it <laughs> uh but no you know there, it, there's still just been a lot of help from everybody across the board uh bare knuckle paul got a lot of stuff from him yeah. you know obviously Corey tbj's making me something right now um fxr division helped me get a lot of things i needed for the build yeah so there's, there's just a lot there's a lot of people and that's one thing i've been trying to do throughout this whole process is to really show people that Really, I think that some of the best things that's ever been made have come from the best collection of of masters yeah. ever. Instead of just not saying not, I'm not saying that one person can't build an amazing bike, but usually there's more hands involved in what meets the eye. It takes a team. Yeah, it does take a team, uh, and that's one that's one thing I've struggled with a little. Yeah, bit. I was going to ask you. So being, being here now, like um, finding your, you know, your dream team to come yeah, through so, on the. So I've really so I've been lucky that. Uh, I say lucky, I've, I've put myself out there, right? So uh, a couple of months into being here, um, there's a little swap meet, Stafford Springs swap meet near me. It's great, great little swap meet. Um, and I bumped into a custom painter, Aaron Castor for Castor Customs. Got chatting um, and he was like, oh, why don't you come down and see what I do? You know, if yeah. you want to, you know, what are you doing? Do you want a job? I was like, well, uh, not really because I can't work at, you know, I've, I had to do a certain amount of time before I can work and, you know, yeah. to be legal. Don't want to get deported. Um, 
so yeah, so I went down and we hit it off. He's a really good guy. Um, ended up helping build a bike for the hardcore show okay. in March, mm-hmm. which we didn't make it to because we had truck trouble. Oh, that sucks. I'll, yeah. I'll talk to you about that later. But uh, we got there, had a great time. Um, you know, and he's like, you know, you come and use the shop, come and use the resources, come and do, which I've refrained from doing. You know, yeah. I go up there, I help him out with his stuff that he needs, you know. Uh, I've done a few bits up there, but only when I've really needed to because I did want to come in as the garage builder. You know, I did want to I did want to try and rough it out a little bit and show that, you know, when the guys are looking around the bikes, you know, I haven't done this all myself, I haven't. But, you know, you can do this stuff in your garage. You mm-hmm. don't have to have all this fancy stuff and, you know, you can turn out a good bike mm-hmm. um, with the right parts, you know, and a few of the right people. Yeah. Um, which I think I've achieved with, with uh, you know, Aaron up at Castle Customs doing my paint and stuff. And, and it was quite nice because some of the parts I'm running on the bike, you know, I'd go up and help him out with something. And uh, he'd say, oh, you needed a fuel pump, a sports fuel pump, didn't you? I've got this one. You can, you can have that. Mm. So, you know, yeah. I've got I've a load of bits. And then I, from, from, from working there, it's right on the side of a, a dealership. So, uh, you know, I've got to know the techs up there. So they, uh, one of the techs, Timmy, helped me out with my Thundermax this week. He put mm. a map on there for me. Um, and if I get time, he said that he'll touch it up on the rolling road for me, which is, you know, that's, nice, that's yeah. great. So again, that's something you can't do in your garage. You've mm-hmm. got to have other people. Yeah. Um, just just in a, a, a small conversation with my neighbour um, at, bar- at a barbecue they were having, I was saying I was frustrated that I was trying to drill some stuff with accuracy. You know, back home I had a, sm- I had a shop and I had a lathe and a mill. And, you know, here I've, I've got a lathe, but I haven't got a mill. I wanted to drill some stuff with some accuracy. So his mother-in-law piped up. She's like 80, I suppose. She's full of life, mate. She's like, honestly, life and soul. Uh, she said, oh, you need to speak to my friend. I was like, okay. I didn't know what to expect. So yeah. she put me in touch with this guy. Anyway, he runs uh, uh, the mach- uh, engineering um, shop for a pharmaceutical company. So and he has full use of the... So I drew some parts out. He drew them properly. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. you know, and I've ended up with a really nice uh, brake bracket for uh-huh. my caliper set up on the back, um, some brackets for my uh, suspension reservoirs and, you know, all yeah, yeah. from... Yeah, little things yeah, here and there, yeah. yeah. And he's he's loved doing it. I mean, it's something totally that, you know, he's not into bikes. Yeah. But he's been really excited about the project because he's getting to be a part of something that is going to be good. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's... it's uh, you know, it's it's. I was having this conversation with Corey the other day, and he really, I think I it was when I took a fairing in the tank to his house to kind of lay out the lines yep. to make sure they kind of matched. And he, I think he had told me at that time, or it might have been another time, but I think it was then. He's like, man, I think that he's like at, at this moment, I think I enjoy the process of building these right more right. than riding them. Right. And for the longest in my life, I've always more or less looked down on that, yep. like. How could you, you know, not want to ride them? But, you know, I even though I'm not at that level on that, I still, me, on this bike, it's still the idea or the the concept of riding this thing, you know, to Terralingua and to Durango. There's still yeah. that. It's high on the list of what yeah, of I course. want out of this. But I can see that. I, I, I'm closer to understanding that mentality of people that, that really do get a kick out of the seeing something – start in their head and come out into yeah. reality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, while I've been probably hard on these people the last, you know, 10 years of my life, I, I'm starting to understand now. I don't know if I could ever fully disconnect from the writing aspect of them, but because I think that plays into the way that they look and feel yeah, and, the, and, and the, function. The riding, the riding for me is the reward. It's, it's, you know, you spend this time building something yeah. and when you ride it, you know, for the first time, it's, yeah, it's the excitement. But you, you, that first ride, I mean, I, I've done it a handful of times. Even if it's just a slightly yeah. modified bike, it's like you're so in tune with everything, everything. going on because you don't know if you forgot yeah. a bolt or yeah. if these brakes gonna work, or all this type of shit. Yeah. So you're you're just like really just everything switched on, heightened. You, you're yeah. on, you're on full alert for anything. And uh, and for me, you know that feeling, and then obviously building bikes for a lot of my friends and stuff. When you know back home, when we were out and about, 
you know, and you've got four, five custom bikes, mm -hmm. and you look over, and it's just, it's just cool. Yeah, it's just cool. It's like, you know, when we, it's that, it's that meme of the front yard yeah. with all the BMXs on it. You know, that's what it is. It's you're out with all your mates uh -huh. on cool bikes, and uh, you've had a part to play in it. It's, it's. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. You know, bare knuckle Paul was talking about. He did a he did an extended or an extended journey trip to Sturgis this year with right. uh, Darren McKeg and I some saw, of his yeah, other I saw buddies. That, yeah, yeah. And he talked about you know I think it was on a phone call we had just how much he really enjoyed that experience on the FXR that he had built I think the year before last, right. and one. just with yeah. those other guys and their choppers that they had built like. Yeah, I that's I think that's the experience that, that we're all gonna have on this tour. Yeah. Um, with way more attention. It might it could it could ruin yeah, you know, might, it yeah. could ruin the the way it feels to do this, but at the same time, you know uh man, like And it's as as far apart as we are, like I feel, you know, I I'm the outsider, right, coming in. But yeah. I've never been I've never been excluded, which is nice. You yeah. know, uh, you know, uh, Paul, I've dealt with for a few years anyway with parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris from FXR Division, the same. Um, so I kind of, I didn't know him, but you know, I could chat to him. Um, but everyone's been good. You know, yeah. me and Rennie have had a bit of banter. Um, you know, me and you have talked. Me and Justin. Uh, I mean, TBJ. Yeah, he's great. That bloke is great. <laughs> it's it's just you know, and Clem, I chewed Clem's ear off at the uh, Indian Larry. Yeah, for an hour, a couple of hours, we were chatting. Mm. He's just such a cool, cool bloke. Yeah, he really is. Um, and I feel like he thinks he hasn't got his shit together, but he definitely has. You know, his bike is—it's uh, gone from not a lot. You know, we've seen it on a group chat. It's gone from not a lot to, to yeah, being pretty. You know, almost now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and the crazy thing is, like, I know that. I, I think I talked about it on Justin's podcast uh, when he came in, but I hit a point where I thought I was going to have to back out, yeah, you know, which yeah. I didn't want to. Um, and it's like every time somebody bring brings that kind of energy into the chat, the chat immediately turns into, what do you need? Yeah. Let's figure this out. Everyone's been like that. Everyone has been yeah. like that for me, 100%. Yeah. They really have. Um, and it's just been so good, so good. You know, and, and, and what have I got to offer back? You know, I, I'll offer whatever I can, but... Yeah, you know, yeah but you know what I mean. So they've not done it because they want something in return. Yeah, they've exactly. done it because they wanted to do it. And I think that you know when Justin and I set out to do this, you know, as as the conversations kind of snowballed, um, the concept was to create a camaraderie over a competition. Yeah, right. Um, one thing I've noticed in my years of being on this side of the the, the podcast, you know, talking to people. Uh, when I would go to SEMA and then I'd link up with some of the, you know, when you go to SEMA, it's like you, the bike guys flock yeah. together, yeah. you know, cause while everything's relative at SEMA to motorcycles, you know, like yeah. the, the tools, the, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the so it's, it's like, you're, you're the, uh, you're, you're the, the minority, minority. Yeah. for sure there. Right. And there's this thing, it's like the biggest people of competition become the closest friends when they're at yeah. an event because they're the most relatable to each other. Yeah. You know, someone that's, building a bike in, in Detroit, Michigan, and somebody building a bike in Phoenix, Arizona, have a lot more in common than they might think. And when they get together, those conversations help each other because while we're on the same path, you might be here on this topic yeah. or this thing, and I might be here on this thing, and ever like the, the cross-pollination of ideas and, and solutions and mindsets getting through things help help us all along this path of, of being in the custom motorcycle industry. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people have ever thought of it that, that deeply, but I know that when I go and I hang out with Brian and TBJ, I crash at his house and we stay up till two or three in the morning talking the next day, I feel more knowledgeable yeah. or better about some of the things that I'm doing because of that reassurance of somebody else. And a nice bit of motiva you know, motivational, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it just gets, gets the juices going again it's yeah and i mean you can if you think about it like I, I think that when we started putting this out there i mean we've had the little you know chime ins useless chime ins <laughs> get out of here nerd uh <laughs> that have popped up on instagram here and there where people are trying to pit us to, against each other like it's a yeah. competition you know 
Justin's obviously paying a lot of people off to get on yeah, there and say yeah. stuff. But <laughs> the point is, you know, we try to tell people it's like it's not a competition like that. Right. Well, you know? can I say, though, mm. I'm the only one that won the competition. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. I fucking won. Yeah, you wrote a good oh, email. I yeah. <laughs> I'll send it in two videos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So Wonka. with um, you know, with that being said, it's like when you're trying to like almost not re-educate, but just reintroduce a way of doing this stuff to a public that's so used to competition in a yeah, different way. Yeah. And while this don't get me wrong, I know that each one of us, when when we post something in the group chat, you know. Because usually what people see on a, on a FXR Friday or FXR tour post, it's usually been in the chat for a week or two or yep. it, maybe a month in some aspects. Yep. But when we see that update, we all get motivated to want to do better. Yep. And so the competition is there, but it's a healthy one. It's it's one within yourself of like wanting to level yourself up to either match or try to beat the other one in your eyes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you're not, you know, you're not relying on on an outside source to tell you that yours is better or worse or whatever the case may be. It's it's for me. It's always been. It's about peers. It's like yeah. if you, if your peers appreciate what you're doing, and they'll be the most honest as well. I find. Mm-hmm. You know, same with my fight career. It's like you'd get out of the ring, you just had a shit fight, and then some pissed up lad would come and say, "Oh, you should have done this. You should have done done that." And it's like, mate, you get in there. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean. It's like, what, what, what are you saying right now that is gonna help me? It's not. I'll listen to my trainer. I'll listen to the trainer of the kid that just beat me. You know. Yeah. You know, like I'll listen to you. I'll listen to Ben Uncle Paul. I'll, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what matters. You know, there's always gonna be in there. There's always gonna be. A, you should put more icing on that cake, or. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, so yeah, yeah it is a uh, that front fender doesn't fit oh, on choppers. <laughs> Well, I've seen it today in person. It looks quite good. Um, Brian. <laughs> Hater. Uh, no, it, it really is that. I mean, and unfortunately, you know, drama sells. Yeah. You know, drama yeah. And, and opposition that like that's that's why I like TV shows like American Chopper always did well. Yeah. You know, and it's it's interesting listening to some of the uh, like Dave Poet's stories and stuff. And, you know, and, and Billy Lane's been putting out a few good YouTube videos of of the forced drama that they would put. You know, oh, to, he to, did? Yeah, I, I need to check that they, out. They would say about, you know, that, you know, this is not what really happened and, you know. Well, and, so the reason I think that shit's bad is because in order to really shine light on, on the good things about what motorcycling yeah. can be, you have to stop, like, putting light on the things that, that, that make it bad, you know, yeah. because everybody loves the drama when they're on the good side of it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you're the when your your team's bigger and you have more of a of a of an argument coming out, it feels good to be that, right? Yeah. But when you're on the bad end of that, when you're on the on the receiving side of that, which usually that's how it works when drama comes around, you know, because you know nobody's perfect in this no. shit, then it sucks, and you're like, oh fuck this, I'm I'm gonna get into a different bike or a different world that's not so toxic yeah. right and they're all fucking toxic because all this shit we're it's doing the, is human nature yeah, yeah. you it's know it's the same it's just a different color or a different yeah. you know that's not fucking texas barbecue <laughs> you know don't start on chili <laughs> don't that's there's no beans and chili like everything in yeah. everything in them like there, there's that meme that came out a while back where it's so fitting where a man it was a man who turned thirty years old, and one of these four things will become their identity. Yeah. You know, it's like their yard, a Corvette, a motorcycle, right. or a grill, or some shit like yeah. that. It's like, yeah. and I understand that. I think that we're all trying to find a, this little slice of, uh, you know, our own where you belong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who's my tribe yeah, outside yeah, of yeah. this, you know, family I made? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But oh man, like I, I just I wish that the 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 industry or the scene would allow real motorcycling to shine over all the drama that is filled. Like even, even, you know, as, as much as I am excited about this bike riders movie coming out, it's still based on club stuff. Yeah. Right. I think we could do getting away from that. Um, yeah. You know, not, not because the, the, the club scene is an important, plays an important scene in the motorcycling yeah, scene. Yeah, it does. It does. But it's not the only thing in the motorcycling well, scene. It, I, I, I 1,000% agree about the club thing, but that's why I would like to see a 
movie or something done around clubs that just really talk about why it's so good. Yeah. But yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. sell. Yeah, the, the, the brotherhood, the, yeah. the camaraderie, the, you know. Yeah, why doesn't that sell? Yeah. You the, know what right, I mean? the, the runs. You know, that's, that's for me, uh, that's what I used to enjoy was... The runs, yeah. yeah. We'd go to, you know, somewhere that was pissing down with rain and we'd camp for you three days. Together. And yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's that, That's the best stuff in the world. Yeah. But, you know, like the, uh, so many people choose not to do those type of things because they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't understand the fun of it, right? Yeah. But if you saw a movie where, you know, they did a, like, take any of my road trips across the country there's earlier there's there was more problems than there's been as of recently but when you just show the encounters that people deal with on a normal traveling on a motorcycle yeah. you could maybe dramatize it a little bit but there doesn't have to be this element of death no fighting another biker gang at a bar or fighting you know it doesn't have to be what is it the outsiders movie where there's the 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 greasers and the what yeah. are those other guys called in that the fucking preppy dudes or whatever but yeah there I, I think that I think that just culturally or just human nature, we look at everything as like so black and white and you choose the side you're gonna be on and then there has to be opposition. Yeah, you choose teams, don't you? It's yeah, yeah. tribal, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I you know, looking at it from this aspect of what we've kind of created, I don't know how to exploit that in a way to, to get people to see it or feel it, right? Because if if it was 10 of us talking shit publicly on internet against each other, this thing would be huge. Yeah. Well, look at, uh, what was the last with dirty bird and, Oh yeah. Did. The battlegrounds Phoenix <clears throat> thing. Yeah. I mean, biker build off was always actually quite good. Yeah. You know, there'd, there'd be a little bit of shit talking. There'd be a little bit of like, it was banter the same way we were doing. Yeah. 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 Like, Russell Mitchell would send Billy Lane some plumbing fittings. Yeah. Some shit like that. It would be it would be in good jest, right? But yeah, the uh At the end the, of the day the battle when these guys rode bikes together, you would see the camaraderie yeah. of them helping each other work out issues on the road Fixing together. Each other's shit, yeah. And yeah. that's the beauty of that show. Yeah. But unfortunately I feel like maybe the ratings of that couldn't they couldn't keep up with the ratings of well, Orange Paul County, Tuttle throwing a fucking wrench across the shop, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's a spanner in the UK. That's a spanner. <laughs> <laughs> the wrench. Uh, but yeah, and then that bat that uh I forget what it's called, sorry, the the John Shope battle. Oh, Battlegrounds Phoenix. That that was very toxic. I don't know. Yeah. It was all based around, you know, a bit of Comp hatred like, and, and yeah. Yeah, it's all based on the fact that they're 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 in a very heavily motorcycle city in phoenix yep. and they're all kind of battling for the same customer base yep. they all have different styles and looks but if you if you watch that show you'll actually see that when they're actually together they're usually oh, okay. pretty like amicable communal. And, yeah, yeah yeah like yeah, oh yeah. like they have a connection to each other yeah but when they're separated it's like these networks try to get people to just talk shit about each other you know because it sells for them i mean they've done well out of it i suppose because he's he's still busy isn't he uh, uh, I think uh, I mean guys like like uh, you know who was uh, the guy that built everything? He fucking I oh, forget. He used to do it all in his garage. I oh, that was name, uh, I never, never heard, heard about anything of him. He kind of he there was a bike that he had built that ran around Dallas for a while. Right, it was a wild custom, but you know th that style of bike just kind of went away, and I think yeah. that that's where he shined. Right, you know, like some of us, uh, it, it's kind of a bad thing, uh, not a bad thing, but it's kind of a some some styles of bikes like oh shit this is my this is me this yeah the stars of a line for me right now yeah you know and then they get out of the line and yeah. it just doesn't it fit evolves. anymore yeah i wasn't yeah, i mean russell mitchell's a, a prime example yeah. he he had a run with a style of bike that fit and then he never evolved it right yeah and unfortunately i think that that's the other thing that that is kind of a bad trait that people have in this industry is that they're not willing to go back to the drawing boards and look within to cr to reinvent themselves yeah. yeah you know and and evolve you know evolve it's, yeah yeah it's because i wasn't always into you know performance bikes yeah you know i i had choppers hardtails this that you name it you yeah know? um but when i found them it's nothing like it yeah it isn't but so the thing is with that you can actually ride them you can ride them and you can do everything but it's not gonna last forever man no 
at some point yeah, you'll you'll have experienced everything that the, your meter is full with this bike in this this yep. world and you need a new something new yeah you know unlike oh. marriages we can change bikes yeah, yeah, and change yeah. style yeah. bikes yeah. without you know it costing too much money yeah <laughs> no i'm i'm uh i'm lucky with my my yeah. uh, choice of woman i'm good so am i good i got pretty that. lucky yeah. too yeah. yeah but i think there's nothing like right now um you know, I, I, I've got my, I got a, a, an amazing bagger that I'm super, um, you know, thankful that life gave me the opportunity to own, yeah. but I've ridden baggers solely since 2017 and I'm kind of over it yeah. right now. There's nothing wrong with the bike. I think that anybody getting into those bikes and doing what I've already kind of done for myself on it, perfect bike for you. If you want to travel, if you want to have a good city ripper, like it's a great bike. I've just... I'm not inspired by it right now. Yeah, you yeah. know, I can I can see that because you can with with the you know especially for you you've you've been performance baggers for so long you've probably had every suspension setup there is to know yeah. which one is good. You know, you're you know where you like your bars. Yeah, That's, the hard you, part is like you you get you you get your your setup. You got your staple things, that and you, it's hard to kind of get away from those yeah. because you know those work yeah. and they. They check all the boxes yeah. for you, right? I'm, I'm kind of like that, though. I'm kind of, you know, I know which seat I want to run. I've mm -hmm. stepped out of the box with this one in as much as uh, for this FXR, I'm going to run FXR Division's Saddleman. Their seat is one of my favorites um, as far as, like, the styling on it. Yeah. I, I, obviously, I'm a Lucky Dave's guy. That's my favorite yeah, yeah, fitting yeah. seat. But yeah. when they came out with the shape of their seat, I was like, God damn it. Yeah. You did it again. But other, <laughs> other than that, I was always Saddleman, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've gone with bare knuckle stuff because it's just it's just good. It's good stuff. You know, I know that I know that he's in a tour. Um, you know, I've still bought stuff off of him. He's, yeah. he's not giving me stuff. We've all helped each other here. We're not. Yeah. Um, he has helped me out. Yes, but I run his. I'm running this stuff because I want to. Not. Mm. You know, I'm not. I'm not one of these people that I won't run it just because. Yeah. You know, if I think it's shit, I'm not going to use it. Um, you know, uh, I know this. This will get mixed. Mixed views but like i love uh kevin from big bear performance his mm. suspension i've i've run his suspension on three of my own personal bikes mm -hmm. and i'm going to run it on this one i've put it on numerous customer bikes mm -hmm. and uh he's always you know i can remember talking to him on you don't have boxing day boxing day is like day after christmas mm. i see it on so, the calendar I just yeah never so know what the fuck it is he's rung me on boxing day you know to work out an issue with uh, on Andrew's bike actually yeah but, um, yeah you know so he's he's been he's been good to me so I'll, I'll run his stuff um, I don't know why more people don't but there you go uh, it's history yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know let's not get into it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no so um, you know the the we all have the staple things like your Lucky Dave stuff that you run yeah yeah you know, I mean because you know yeah like it's, I mean Obviously, I have a podcast and I have sponsors, but I'm, I've been real fortunate that all the sponsors that I have are people that I've created relationships yeah. prior to yeah. um, them becoming sponsors. So, you know, I, I've ran, you know, that gold FXR that's super famous that uh, everybody hates oh, on. that one. Yeah. Uh, that that one. one right there. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, yeah. that's, I met Dave in that process of that bike. I bought the bars and the seat from him. Right. And he got enthusiastic about my build and he wanted to like, man, a gray seat would be sick on there. And I was like, I'll take, you know, yeah. I'll take your word for it. And yeah. I love that seat. Um, same thing. Like, you know, had this bike not been such a custom that I, I would have definitely went lucky days a hundred, hundred percent right. again, you know, but I don't know, man, it's, uh, it's I, same, you know, everybody's got like their own flavor their kit you yeah. know what i mean and i think that's the other good thing about it is that everybody's bringing something different but still a step above I mean, you know what i mean let me bring this up to you so how how like like when did fxrs come into your kind of right so good story actually okay. so we were riding back from uh a funeral we'd done like mm -hmm. so obviously biker funerals are quite a big thing um we'd me and Ratty were riding back with uh, a member from a different big club, um, riding back to the shop, escorting him back, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, we got onto a bit of dual carriageway, which is 
which is a, a fast load, right? So, and he just pinned this thing, and it went, mm -hmm. and it went, and it went, and I was giving. I had a so this was I was on a metric. I was on a Yamaha XVS six fifty, and my mm -hmm. mate had a, the eleven hundred version, and um, I was just blown away. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd worked on this bike for him, um, not not engine wise, just just helped him with maintenance stuff yeah you know? uh, and he was a guy that i got on with quite well so you know i talked to him and stuff and uh but that was the first and it was a club style fxr it mm -hmm. was set up perfectly the suspension and everything on it and he had a i think it was a 113 that his brother in holland had built for him mm -hmm. and but this thing made us look like we were going backwards <laughs> um and from that point it was kind of like fuck i need yeah. to get you know so but it was out of my reach at that point. So I went straight to a sportster and then I did probably, I don't know, 10 sportsters, you know, mm. however many. And Is there a lot, like a lot of used Harley kind of things that run around? Do you, do you have so like the whole we, swap meet stuff? And it's not like it is here. Mm. We do, but it's not, it's, it's not anywhere near like it is here. I mean, it's, it's getting better for, so our scene at the moment that what's, what's big is like your shovel head chop, uh, your pans, stuff like that, that sort of uh, 60s style chop, 70s style chop. We've got a lot of shows geared up for that. Um, and I'm not, I'm going to offend some people here, but it's it's not the, they're not hipsters. Like some of them are, yeah. you know, some of them are in it purely for the scene, but it is very much, it's, you know, they'll wear, wear the right boots. They'll wear the right label jeans and, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, you know, so there, there's, there's, that's the scene for secondhand motorcycles at the moment. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a lot easier to obtain a new motorcycle. You never used to be able to finance a Harley mm. in the UK. Oh, for real? Um, that was, I say never used to, like 15 years ago. And then they started financing. Well, mm. and now they do the whole, I think they call it PCP. So you put down whatever, uh, you know, in uh, first payment, and then you make a monthly payment for three years. You never owned a bike, you give it back. Oh, you like just a get lease? another one. Yeah, yeah. So they do they do a lot of that, um, which is why you you're starting to see now quite a few baggers. Um, but then, eight years ago, say it was all sportsters, and then those guys have you know mm, they've had that sportster, and then they've chopped that in. You know that's given them a certain amount of money, so they've moved up. Um, very few highly modified motorcycles, I'd say. There's a lot of ground up builds, mm -hmm. but they're mostly of a chopper okay chopper style um when it comes to the custom baggers and the diners and the fxrs very few mm. i could probably tell you all of them but yeah it's, it's weird I, um, you know because like that frame i got i paid 800 bucks for it with a title I know. you know what i mean yeah now it was it was a shit frame yeah. there uh, everything i did or Corey did to it yeah. was necessary to think to bring that thing back yeah. to life right but you can usually find a frame anywhere in America for a thousand to two grand, depending on the condition yeah. and maybe the VIN number on it. Yeah, so I mean, we're we're so for a sports to frame back home, you're paying about fifteen hundred pounds. Damn. For, What's that equivalent to? It's about two grand, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, with with a V five, so that's our title. Okay. Um, and then from that, you can build that to whatever you like, and you don't have to do anything. Okay. Uh, and the good thing that the good thing that we do have, which I'm finding here's a bit of a pain in the ass is like because we're a small country you can buy a you can buy a, a a bike in scotland wales anywhere in england and you just sign the paperwork over and that's it good because mm. the license plate stays with okay the with the with the bike whereas here obviously it doesn't does it so well they they you can leave it with the bike but a lot of people keep it so you yeah. don't start running tolls and things like that yeah. and and also if i was to buy a bike from you and take it back to Connecticut I'd have to have it inspected which could be difficult right yeah because um, you'd have to end up getting a so I, I've sold and shit. my first performance bagger I sold to a kid out of uh out of like Riverside California right so well the bike had to have at least 7,500 miles on it before the California would even let it get registered right so I remember I had to do a day trip in Texas to put like a thousand miles on it so, because yeah. the kid was flying out here and then riding it home and even though him riding the bike back home would have put him over the 7500 mark they wouldn't do the title work here right to allow him to, to allow him yeah. to so yeah. i mean i remember 
Yeah. It's just weird. It's because each state has their own. It's kind of like states are smaller countries yeah. here. Yeah, you know, they run, you know, it's kind of, uh, I forget the word they use, but the states kind of govern themselves, yeah, if you I, will. I can see how that works, though, because it's such a such a massive country and the states are so different that, yeah. that you can't have the same laws in each state. You can't. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. You know, we're, we're a small country. It's, it works. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see now from being here, it's like I was saying earlier to you, I, I can see why some Americans never leave the US because there is so much here. Um, whereas in the UK, you know, I've been on I've been to on holiday to Spain at the age of I don't know seven, mm-hmm. you know, and been to different countries and stuff because yeah, you, you just do. But here you don't you don't really don't need to do that. I can see the want to do it. Yeah, the things that they give us like our advantages are also the things that keeps us kind of it yeah. makes it harder to travel and see the rest of the world, right? But I've been saying it for years, man. The, the country's full of really, really nice uh, gyms. And I was actually, I was staying at a Charlie Traveling Chopper. I stayed at his house on the way to Sturgis. Right. And there was a couple there. I might have brought this up at one point already. But there was a couple there that's been traveling on their motorcycles from Australia all over the world for the last 10 years. They haven't been home yet. And they were right. only staying in America right now. Because they had they they they've got three dogs they take with them everywhere, right? And Australia won't let them back in until one dog has had a certain shot in like ninety days in an approved country before it'll get yeah. back in. So they're just kind of like bouncing around America right now. And I got to hear some of their stories, and you know, of course, have to ask like, you know, what are some of the, what's some of the most amazing places you guys have ridden, or what would you say is the the most amazing? And it's like, yeah, there's there's this amazing thing in Switzerland. Yeah. There's this amazing road in Italy. Yeah. Well, but as like in one place, yeah. like that's, that's what we have in the UK. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, there's a couple of amazing places in, but generally, yeah, it's not that great. Whereas for my house here, you know, I didn't choose where I live because of the roads, but I can go a couple of different ways. And I've got it's good amazing. riding. Yeah. Yeah. And and so that's kind of the thing that they were saying is that even though it's spread out, you, they said, and I don't know, I, I haven't like fact checked this, but they said that America seems to be the only place that has a little bit of every type of climate or style of land. I don't think that's the way you would put it, like terrain. Yeah that's present in the rest of the world. Now, obviously, there's more extremes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, you got the extreme of air, uh, of Mount Everest or the Sahara Desert or the tropics of, like, the South Pacific, you know, and, you know, Indonesia and stuff like yeah. that, right? But we have a similar thing here go, in every part yeah. of the country. So, well, I never really thought about that. Well, look at, so, you know, the, the two-lane life guys, mm-hmm. I mean, their videos that they do, their trips and journeys and stuff, yeah. you get to see so much landscape and different areas that they ride through and go through. And mm-hmm. it's just, and it's ever-changing. Um, it's I think for me, it would be a, ama- like, what I, what draws me to want to go to London is not so much the land, it's the history. Like, yep. being able to ride on roads that are, you know, a thousand years old or, yeah. you know, or to see a fucking castle. You know how many fucking, you know how many... I used to. You can. I ride. was a He-Man kid, dude. <laughs> so was I. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I get it. So you can ride <laughs> around. So you can ride around the outside of Windsor Castle. Okay. So Windsor Castle is is uh, there's a cobbled road that runs all the way around it, and you can ride all the way around it. Yeah. So which is great, and that's a real castle. And sometimes not the Queen, God rest her soul, but sometimes the King now will be there. Nice. You know? If he's there, the flag will be flying. <laughs> so you know he's home. That's wild. <laughs> My that, parents actually just got back from London right. doing a week trip there. And uh, just their pictures, I was jealous of it the whole time. What, uh, what did they did, did they say how it felt? Uh, is it busy? Did they find it busy? Did they find it? Or, uh, um, this, I mean, they, they were saying that it was like the whole pub situation. They were like, yeah, there were good pubs there and everything. Yeah. And yeah. they ate at several of them. And yeah. But it was like, I was gonna bring up earlier. It's like a homey, like a home yeah. experience, yeah. kind of thing. It's not just like a bar that you. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it is very different. Uh, um, the, the pubs back home to what I've, I've not been in a lot here, but yeah, yeah. The, the pub you ha- you have people that are always there. Yeah, you know, and it's like um, Cheers. Yeah, and they love yeah. their Cheers. Yeah. They love their 
like ten could be on the be on the bar that you know, oh they leave their own thing yeah, there, yeah. stuff like that um, but yeah it's, uh, but no I went back um, I went, maybe April time I went back and I actually picked up my engine and transmission uh-huh. chipped it over and uh, it felt claustrophobic mm. to go which is funny because really? I hadn't been here this long you know this long but but the the roads were the the lanes are small the cars are smaller. You know, we had a, a lot uh, of the buildings are close together, yeah. like in the bigger yeah, so, cities. Yeah, so we're even in in so we're we're in a small market town, and um, which is quite green really. Uh, and there's a new estate put up at the top of town, and they're detached houses, right? And these things are selling for nine hundred and fifty grand, hundred grand, a uh, million do- uh, pounds, and you could l- reach out of your bathroom window and touch the neighbor's house. Mm. They're that that's not a detached house. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not a detached house, you know. And they're like a million pounds. Damn, it's crazy. Sounds Damn. like Venice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's I don't know, man. Like, it, I, I guess it's a perception thing where a lot of people just get to the point where they, you know, oh, but you know, this other part of the the world, and yeah. and there's there's obviously amazing places in this world, yeah. but yeah. the thing is with like Europe itself, it's it's more the history that I'm interested in. Like that's yeah. one thing I like about America. When I go east, northeast. That's the oldest part of our country as far as the civilization that we know now. Yeah. But then go then again you go west and you get to older shit that's more, you know, from Native Americans and you know, just the crazy land things that's taking place here. So that's interesting. Yeah. You know, here is you know, you're in prime Comancheria right now. This is where some crazy shit took place. There's just a lot of history and I think that traveling on motorcycles, it puts you in those historical places in a different way than if you travel on a oh, car. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Being on a bike, you see everything. Yeah. And you can, you can just stop. If you want to stop or if you if you see something, you can just put off the road. Mm-hmm. It's, it, whereas in a, you know, you can in a car, but it's not the same. You're not, so you don't see it in the same eyes. I read somewhere that like when you're in a car, it's like you're watching life through a TV yeah. because there is a box, yeah. there's a frame around it. And I guess you could say the same thing when you're wearing a helmet, but mm. I guess... The thing is that when you're in a car, all the elements are pulled off of yours. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, maybe you can smell it. You can definitely smell those skunks when you drive by them, right? <laughs> but the smell, the feel, the wind, like those things get taken away from you. So yeah. you're out. You're more outside of the moment than you are inside of it, right? Yeah. yeah well, when you when you drive through a wooded area, you know, and, and the temperature drops a little bit, and then yeah. you come out into the sun, and it, that heat hit, you don't get that in a car. You got the AC set at. Yeah. 66 degrees or whatever and it's the same yep it's, uh, yeah it's yeah nice. there's there's i think there's a there's something very um therapeutic in a way of more mentally therapeutic yeah it, it's kind of like allowing yourself to feel those changes and live in them versus i think most people have a lot of an- anxiousness or anxiety these days because they live in such a constant monotone life right. everything feels the same everything looks the same everything is the same and so change is more of a of a shock for people yeah. than than say for someone like us or myself for sure that where I'm constantly feeling change through riding motorcycles or uh, you know different levels of threat too you know yeah. I'm out yeah. on the open yeah. road then the sun goes down now there's a wildlife threat yeah you know or I'm in a big city now there's a car threat or you know this road sucks so that's and, saying about the wildlife that's something that uh, I've really really um, has opened my eyes moving there. Is, is you know back home we don't have anything we we have badgers they're the only things you got to look out for you might get a bit few deer but generally the deer are quite you know you do you have, do you have any major predators for deer no humans so just that's it keep yeah. them regulated that way yeah, yeah. see the get northeast cold. where you're at they're they're I know infested with deer we have, we'll we'll come down in the morning we'll have seven or eight in our front yard and they're just eating my wife's flowers. <laughs> Why they're not scared of her, I do not know. But they have a what is it? The Lyme disease thing up yeah. in the northeast is big. Yeah. yeah. So we have to have. Uh, so we've got a, we've got a dog. She has to have ticking things and you know injections and whatever. Yeah. And yeah, Lyme disease is a real thing. I know. Wow. I never even knew about it until we moved there. Yeah. Um, Here we have bears. a pig infestation. All right, pig. Yeah. Well, it it's more prevalent when you get out towards more of the the high plains desert you know about 150 miles right. west of here but you'll still see them around here so I, f- yeah. I feel that like uh florida and georgia as well they do don't they i think i think the pig thing is like becoming a nationwide thing i mean maybe south well 
pigs can go feral like quicker than any other animal. So a lot of these people that buy little pet pigs, oh, if they get out, out. Yeah. a week later they're feral. And yeah, and they have they have, have litters like they have a whole bunch of litters a year. Yeah, yeah. Right? and and they tear up farming land and yeah. everything, and that's why a lot of people love it because they just go hunt them all the yeah. time. And I mean that's what ARs were invented for for some of them. <laughs> I mean shit, like isn't it, isn't it like where if you take a regular domestic, not domesticated, but like a farm pig, and you let them roam free, like they'll grow tusks. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, the whole feral yeah. situation. Yeah. They'll grow more hair. They'll get tusks. Yeah. It's really crazy. Like like I said, like a week, they're a completely different animal. Yeah. That's pigs, awesome. Pigs, uh, so my father. Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my father-in-law uh, being a farmer, so we had pigs. And they're, mm. so I've, I've been bitten on the calf by a pig through a welly boot, you know, yeah. like a big rubber boot. They're strong. They're strong oh, yeah. animals. Yeah. Even when they're little. Have you ever picked one up? Mm -hmm. Oh. Honestly, they're just all muscle, all muscle. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we have those pretty bad out here. Um, the deer thing is more south too. We, uh, I'm right. sure we we do have them. It's just Dallas, Fort Worth is such a big metroplex that we a lot of the wildlife out here is like coyotes, you know, occasional bobcats here and there. Yeah, you maybe said a you mountain lion. So I've I've heard of we had maybe one or so, but then you. You said you saw a fox recently. Yeah, I saw. And a I fox. saw a fox, which right. I didn't know we had those down so here. So we have we we have a, the fox, but not you know you'll get one litter in a certain area. They're I think they're quite territorial. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all we, we get those. When we get badgers in the UK. Aren't badgers yes. like aggressive or something like that? Only or is that the you, honey badger? That's the honey, the badger. honey badger. Yeah. Is that a different part of the world? Yeah, that's um, uh, African. Africa, I think. I think. Yeah. Okay. Don't get them in England. <laughs> crazy no. bastards yeah but uh but no we get in in connecticut we bears uh i've seen the bobcat we've we've seen coyote just wandering up the road and it's like they could yeah the bear thing is strange um here uh i've i've ran into moose on the road they're big they're huge and they're aggressive too if you get too right. close to them obviously the buffalo thing but that's people you know they go out of their way in sturges to go see them but it's like dude out here in the plains, like there's buffalo, not wild ones, but you'll be driving down the road and be like, there'll be a fucking herd of buffalo over there in someone's property. You know what I mean? Um, what's the other one? Elk is crazy. Right. You know, elk is just huge compared to your normal deer. Yeah. And they're fucking, they're goddamn, I guess, antlers. antlers. Or, they're just, uh, they're, they're massive. Like the yeah. racks on these things yeah. will be, you know, not that big, but, right. you know, it's insane. <laughs> We had a me and my wife last year after Sturgis. We went to Estes Park and right. we just did like a little uh, vacation there. And um, man, right in front of our little Airbnb hotel thing that we had got or whatever it was, this fucking massive elk just walks into the parking lot and just lays in the parking lot. And everybody around it's taking pictures and cars are stopped. And this dude, I mean, he's massive. Uh, every. It just it literally stops the crowd because yeah. not you know most of the people in that town are tourists, right? So we don't see that kind of stuff very often. But god damn, it was I'd have stopped too. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. If it wasn't in the parking lot, so yeah, I'm, I'm a bit wary, a bit wary of things like that because you know it's just yeah. big, isn't they? Yeah, the crocodile to. thing is, we got those too. Right. Not crocodiles, uh, alligators. alligators. Yeah, you got those. We got yeah, alligators are here. Right. Not as much here as they are in like Louisiana and Florida. Yeah. But um, they're starting to see more in our lakes and our 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 rivers here than ever yeah. before. Most of them were like in Houston area, and it's just spreading. Yeah. So, um, what's the other one? Oh, it's crazy in Florida. Like the further south you go, the more prevalent iguanas become. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like being on Key West, there's just iguanas hanging out on fences and shit. And it's like being from Dallas. Like we don't have that kind of a you know animal just like roaming free. Yeah. And there, it's like they just—they're just chilling. Apparently, they're in an infestation as well. Yeah, they are. Right. I mean, so. th I think those are one of the ones that they have people actually go and hunt them down. Yeah, we and no they, tags. And I—I I knew about this when I was younger because school, but they're pretty dangerous too because they can cut you with their tails. Right. And they—they they can fuck you up pretty good. Um, yeah. So we have that. <laughs> All these things that can kill you. <laughs> yeah, the, the the scary thing is like the bear thing. I you know, TBJ has a great story about a a bear encounter because right. you know he's up there in the Lake Tahoe area, 
Yeah. And uh, even before he moved to where he's at now, he lived on the other side of Lake Tahoe in California. But he's always been like a KTM off-road kind of guy. And as much as I love camping and shit, I like camping close to concrete. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. the one that'll climb a mountain and plop a tent. And then, like, I just, I've, if I would have grew up in the wilderness that way, I'd probably have a different relationship with it to where, you know, encounters like bears or mountain lions and shit like that would be a different thing. But I ain't fucking with it, man. No. Nah. You know, I can deal with homeless people in downtown Dallas pretty well. <laughs> I can't fuck with bears, man. I just can't do that. It's a different language, isn't it? I remember uh, I taught, I said this story before. On the hot bike tour in like 2017, first time I ever camped by myself. And uh, I camped in this little, in the mountains of like the Smoky Mountains area, but it kind of like a little campground out there. And I did I stopped at Dollar General on the way up and got me like a box of powdered sugar donuts and some fucking, like a bunch of junk, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm sitting there on the, in this fire going, I wonder if bears can smell this powdered sugar donut right now. I'm like, fuck, did I just fuck myself? Are they going to come and like rummage through my shit? I was scared shitless. Yeah, I, I ate what I could and I burned the rest of the food. <laughs> I just I didn't mean, want to deal yeah. with that, man. I'll fuck you and bugs. Yeah, dude, I don't fuck with bugs. Well, I've seen Yogi Bear, you know. <laughs> He'd definitely be about them sugar donuts. But, uh, I don't know um, any other like parts of the country like – I'm sure, yeah, the the will, the animal thing is always weird, but I don't know. But, yeah, like, you guys will have fun on this trip, man. I think yeah. all those guys coming in, it's going to be a great experience for all of them, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm hoping uh, to get a couple of my American friends down as well. It just yeah. depends how it works for them with, with work and stuff, oh, workload. Yeah, yeah. And, but, uh, so I should have a few. A so few other than you're just waiting on paint now for the bike and then you're good to go? <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'm... So I sent the video to the group this week of starting it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to do yeah, put the paint on, which then means I can finish up a little bit of my wiring, um, turn signals, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm pretty well there. Nice, I'm pretty well there. I'm, I'm, How confident are you? It's gonna everything will be fine. Oh, you got to be, haven't you? Because if you know what I mean, it's it's yeah. I want I want to ride it. I need to ride it. I want to put if I can put a couple of days on it before we go. Yeah. Then I'll be I'll be happy, yeah. um, just because there'll be that one thing that comes loose. There'll mm-hmm. be, you know, it'll you'll get a mile up the road and it'll misfire, mm. and you'll think, oh, fuck. And you have to go through everything and figure it out, you know. And yeah, I just just uh, uh, want to make sure that I can put some miles on it. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're gonna put you're going Terraling, Terraling. Yeah, I'm gonna leave here Friday. I go to Terralingua. And uh, so I'm going to, in a perfect world, right? I want to, I got a video that I'm working on that's going to kind of talk about like what Matt did, us getting the frame, the bead roll situation he did, these little custom fender um, mount slash license plate bracket that Chris Moose did for me. Um, I got a little bit of video footage of us putting the motor in. It's going to be a hodgepodge video, kind of bouncing around kind of like a, just the accumulation of all the content that I was able to capture over the last two weeks and just put a video out, yeah. right? And then the hope is that that'll come out Monday right? in a perfect world. And then next week, as soon as I get downtime, I'm just going to basically do another sit down and talk about everything I did on the bike with B-roll of the bike over. Yeah. So if I'm talking about the boosted bad mid controls, there's lots of shots of that. And just kind of go through the whole bike and talk about what I did, why – who helped yeah. um, give everybody credit that's, that's helped make this bike possible. And then my goal is to put that out to where it drops on the Monday of us being in Durango. Yeah. Cause I mean, I did put out a picture of the bike yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that, but it's not, it's not done. It's like not I don't want to, sh- I don't want any pictures of my bike as a, like all the parts on it, like yeah. finished until that, t- that, uh that Monday. Yeah. So, that's why I want to go to Ter- Terralinga. Terralinga was a badass place. The event that goes on down there is a really, really great experience, and that's also something I'm looking forward to do. But the thing is down there and the color of this bike and everything about it, like that terrain fits the photography of what right. I want to capture this bike to unveil it to the world. Yeah, so you can put out good shots of your yeah. bike finished rather yeah. than, you know, what 
this is the thing front of the shop. Got, yeah, yeah. The thing that's got me with this tour is uh, my video and photography skills aren't the greatest, you know, and yeah. and it does really make a difference. It does because when yeah. you see, you know, your your videos or pictures go up, uh, Justin's videos. I mean, that video he just dropped with some not gay music. I won't call it that, but like a bit airy fairy. The music, airy uh, fairy. That's a cool little video. And yeah. I was like, fuck, you know, I need to be, this is what I need to try and get better at. And he said, oh yeah, my son did it. And I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, my, that's one thing I, you know, I, I wish, I, I think that, um, put it like this, when it comes to like the content you put out, you don't necessarily have to be a photographer, yeah. but the basic things in photography is something that's not, it's not hard to learn or to adapt to. And then you put it out there and it makes a world of difference. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it's on your iPhone or a yeah. 7,000 art camera. It's just about how you shoot things. And so when you do that, your pictures get seen by more people. So put it like this. If you have the ability to curate the way the world sees you, yeah. the why, you know, of course you want to take advantage of it yeah, and of try to show your work in the best light possible. You know, not, not to say that it's fake. It's not like the real you or the real thing that you've created, but it's just, it's just captured in a way that makes it more appealing to somebody. Yeah. The than, best angle, the best, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. best no, background, you know, yeah. it, you know, a, a, a photography tip that I've, I've always kind of kept in mind is that your background should never overpower your, your, your yeah. subject. It should, if anything, just complement the situation. So yeah. you see a lot of guys that take pictures of their bikes on graffiti walls that yeah, overpowers you lose, you lose the your bike, bike right? Yeah. But if you just find, you know, a cityscape, a, a countryside scape, a, a, you know, right now where you're at with all the fall leaves coming down, yeah. like there's there's a picture everywhere you look, you yeah, know. I mean, I can, I'm lucky that I can literally roll mine to the end of the driveway. Yeah. And there ain't no traffic on my road. You know, I could yeah. sit it there every which way. Exactly. Yeah, good. Yeah, good picture. So that's kind of the thing. It's, it, it is kind of out of the way. You, you do feel a little, you know, influences in the wild or whatever when you're doing yeah. it, but... You know, it just makes a difference. You know, if someone, if you want people to see this thing you built, then you want to take a picture. It's cooler to do that. Yeah. Or yeah. you want to make a good video or whatever the fuck it, you know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes I find as well that you probably do, but I'll get caught up doing what I'm doing. And then I get too far in and I'm like, I didn't take any pictures of. Oh, I, I 100% of the last three days I haven't yeah. videoed anything because and you, it's. It does take your mind off of the task at hand to try to capture it for the world. Yeah. So that's why I said it's going to be kind of a hodgepodge put together video of everything that's been going on because right now is very crucial with this final assembly and the bandwidth in my head needs to be on this and not. Yeah. Not like okay, was my settings good on the camera yeah. and yeah, you know, other stresses and loss that need. I'll sacrifice. Uh, this part of the of this video series to get this done dialed the way it needs to be dialed for that part right yeah. you know yeah. what i mean because yeah. how bad would it be if i made the perfect video but my bike didn't make it yes. outside of dallas because yeah. i forgot to do that's not the uh yeah the bigger picture is it exactly uh, so. yeah yeah no, and so. i mean photography uh, i haven't had a chance to really do as much over the last month and a half because of the involvement of this bike but you know when I did when I finished the Lowrider ST, like I did the same thing. I didn't really show any pictures of it done until after the first night on the road when I stopped yeah. in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and I took pictures of it with like a Route 66 sign and shit like that. Yeah. And to me, that that's like okay, this is the photo that I want to show the world this bike. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, yeah, it wasn't like some super viral photo or anything, but it. I felt better about that. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're putting out the picture of your bike that you see. Yeah. And how you want people to see it. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, and that's as well. So going back to my paint, just waiting on the paint. So I don't know what I'm getting. Mm. So, so uh, uh, obviously I've been, been working in and around Aaron for the best part of a year and stuff. And he knows what I like, you know. So, yeah. and, I, and I do like his style of painting. Yeah. Um, and and I you know I'm a firm believer in if you want something doing then you ask the person that's good at that yeah so whether it be tattoos painting building you a bike you know yeah you don't ask someone that builds amazing performance baggers to build you a period correct shovel head yes yeah. you know um, 
so I'm really excited to see what he comes with. Mm. Um, I don't know what it's going to be. My my uh, my f- my frame is uh, it's a paint huffer flake, um, candy clown. I think it's called. Uh, it's got a bit of everything in there on a silver base, mm. sparkly. I mean, but it doesn't give me a hint of what he's going to do because it's got a bit of everything in there. Yeah. So you know, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he knows the the only. I I, I try and give a couple of. Like with my orange FXR, it was, you know, Flaky said to me, right, what's it, what, what do you want? I said, look, it's got to go with a lot of chrome mm-hmm. and I'm running a brown saddleman. It's got to go with those two things. Yeah. And that's what he came back with. Oh, nice. um, when I did my blue and uh, my Scooby-Doo bike, as I call it, my diner, uh, that was, <sighs> we were we had a show coming up and the guy that painted that is only a couple of units up from my shop. Um, and he was humming and ahhing, what do you want, what do you want? I said, look, I, don't, I want what you want to do. And he had this little um, like model car in his mm. unit. And we were going back and forth for so long. I said, look, just paint it the same as that. Mm. He said, what, you'll let me do that? And I said, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a painter. I'm not that way inclined. Yeah. If, if you paint something for me, I'll know whether I like it or not. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell you what to paint. Cause I've, I've, my approach for paint in – sure everybody's already heard this is just uh i go through a lot of anxiety when i paint yeah because i i want i want to be as stoked about it as a customer and vice versa right um and so for me the reason i sketch and so many people think i sketch for them but i sketch for me i sketch everything i do to work out the ideas in my head to kind of take all these muzzled muffled uh thoughts and kind of put you know broader lines around it so i can understand them and when I put them on paper, it gives me a chance to not only figure out where I'm going so that the next steps that I'm doing are faster. Yeah. Meaning like I'm not going to go buy 20 different colors because I'm not sure yet. I got 20 different colors of markers that I can represent. You can sketch out. And, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'd rather do that because those markers are way cheaper than the tape and the paint. Yeah. And then what it ends up doing is it allows me to give the customer some look into the direction we're going so that they feel more confident because there's nothing worse than painting something for someone when they said do whatever you want and then whatever you want is not what they like and they're not happy yeah no i get that i do get that and Um, so the the other the, the downside to that situation is me painting my own bike is the i i i hate it i hate painting my own shit because i have so many directions that when you come to me with a color or I like this style that home that that like takes a lot of shit off the table and allows a little bit more of a palatable uh workaround of ideas yeah you know what i mean and so for me sometimes that that little bit of input is so much more important than the open input yeah yeah, yeah. the open opportunity if you will yeah. no so. i get that um yeah I, I i do try and give a couple of like for this one it was i'm running a black and black and uh chrome motor so mm-hmm. you know We've got to keep it, you know, I've got some chrome, work, chromed yeah. out wheels. You know, this is where I'm going to have the black. So it needs to, it needs to try and tie in. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, but the way good. that, the way that Corey's bike came together, has been coming together. It was, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a struggle for me because, you know, Corey's idea of custom paint is a very clean, yeah, very clean, very minimal. Um, and as much as I wish that I was the kind of guy that can knock those style of paint jobs out of the park. I've never felt like I was capable. I've always right. felt like I had to keep stepping it up. And next thing you know, it's not a, yeah, it's not yeah, a simple it's paint not, job no, anymore. No. Um, so that was, I mean, in, in my opinion, that was pretty hard. It was more yeah. stressful mentally than it was taxing physically to do. Yeah. And um, I'm happy with the way it came out because I think that as a piece of a puzzle, it fits the puzzle perfectly versus as a different yeah. puzzle all together on top of yeah, this yeah, one yeah, does yeah, that make sense yeah, yeah. so yeah. i mean he, if uh, you look at the fairing it looks great it's a the colors are absolutely beautiful but it's simple yeah but then when you put that fairing on his bike you're like Whew. yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how how yeah. his bike comes out because the parts obviously he's running are predominantly harley parts you know but it's not a, it's not by any means a stock 
yeah. stock freaking motorcycle, is it? It's, mm-hmm. it's you know, and it, but everything's looking looking at his blue bike that he's already built. Everything's going to fit just right. Yeah, everything's going to be perfect. Yeah, yeah it, so it, it see, truly is. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, because I'm a custom painter. I love custom paint. That's mm-hmm. you know, that that to me is uh, you could you could take stock bike, put custom paint on it, and it looks fucking cool. It does. Um, so. I am the over the top paint. I like that. Yeah. That's you know. I know Corey likes the clean and doesn't want it to overshadow the. Yeah. But for me personally, um, go wild because I love custom paint. You know? Yeah. But so I'm really looking forward to seeing this rendition of a of an M8 FXR with a with a slight custom twist. You know? Yeah. Not it, too much. His this I, I feel like we've all been using this word too much within this podcast, but his M8 FXR. It looks like bulldog tough, yeah. Like or bully tough, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And that fairing um, on the FXR chassis with the M8 motor in it yeah. is kind of it's it's sandwiched almost feeling because like an, a traditional RT fairing is kind of tall. Yeah. And the sport glide fairing is kind of smashed and a little bit yeah. more. It's more. It feels wider than it does tall, right? And with that motor and then the clamshells, or not clamshells, the uh, the, yeah, the the RP the bags, big, yeah. it just looks like a very tight, like 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 I said, like a bully, like a, yeah. a pit bull, like the bully breed. Yeah. And it, it just looks really tough. And the chrome wheels, like, <laughs> dude, the chrome wheels on Is his he bike, the, it, he, you take he takes factory stuff and makes it custom. Yeah. And I keep trying to tell people like. Building custom motorcycles doesn't mean going to find out who all the top parts manufacturers are. Yeah. Sometimes it is just recoding things that already yeah. exist. Well, you know I'm, what I'm saying? Uh, you know, so my front brakes out. Uh, I'm using Pan America calipers. You know, they're radial, mm-hmm. um, so they're not meant for that model. My rear brake setup is a Ducati Brembo setup mm-hmm. with their master with a Ducati uh, master cylinders around. So it's you know it's stock stuff. It's not. It's not big money stuff. Yeah. You know, if you bought those Brembos as aftermarket, they're a lot of money each. You know, if you buy them secondhand as a Pan America takeoff or whatever, they're yeah. not a lot of money. Yeah. You know, if you buy uh, stock Ducati or Jigs of Parts or whatever, you know, yeah, they're Jap, Jap part, metric parts aren't, aren't expensive. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere too. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as the year's gone, that's old news. You know, they're on the new bike stuff. So yeah. you can get... Um, so it's just using. So I have, you know, I've, I have got a lot of nice parts on my bike. I have, um, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the FXR tour. It's a yeah. fucking Catalina wine mixer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, um, you know. But uh, but yeah, it's it's his style and what he does. Yeah, I. But you know, it, behind the scenes, I think we've all kind of had those conversations. I'm sure somebody up at, at um, Indian Larry Block parties brought up like, which one are you most excited? Uh, out of, other than your bike, whose bike is probably your like your favorite? For me, yeah, that's hard because I've got <clears throat> so desperate to see how Rennie's comes out. Yeah, desperate because his was uh, the one that I had the most. You know, this is me on the on the last one in. I shouldn't even be saying stuff like this, but he, his his idea of what he was going to deliver was one I had the most worry for because it was mismashing like a Springer front end. I didn't even know how he was going to get that to work on the FXR. Yeah, um, and that with that whole neck situation, and there's just so many things that I just thought, how's this going to go? And then um, I forget what picture it was. It might have been one that he had outside his shop where it was all loosely together the bollocks yeah it looks absolute bollocks it does yeah. and then you've got paul that's building a freaking I'm, I'm interested <laughs> like paul hasn't really shown much even to the group chat as far as like overall stance of the yeah. bike and things like that but i don't know if that's because he's he's very far along i think he's <laughs> he's like i mean he's the thing with paul though is that he's so good isn't he yeah he's you know he can he's literally doing it and it's done yeah, he's not he's not doing it thinking about it and thinking oh no I'm not sure and having yeah, to change yeah. it he 
fucking knows. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like la- I think last night or the night before we were talking because I don't even remember which night. I don't even know what day today is. Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Yeah. Um, we had talked on the chat and he was like showed. I think the seat he had like a king and queen style yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm li- and I knew he was doing a chopper, but now I'm like really intrigued to see yeah. how because he said in the chat he was blending like a 70s, 80s, and 90s style chopper together. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm interested. Is in that, that like a do you call that Crazy Frank? Uh, I don't think so, that's a crazy. A, because, crazy well, Frank is a style of Fender. Yeah, because uh, I'm only calling it that because he's obviously he's using a swing arm. So yeah. how? So that's still going to be in a yeah, you're suspension right. Suspension yeah, setup. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's the the ideas and how people went about accomplishing them is what sets apart these bikes from. Yeah. What I think people thought originally the FXR Tour was going to be about. Because yours has stayed pretty true to what you what you wanted to do at the beginning. To I think I've had the longest. I, I think I've carried this idea for the longest out yeah. of everybody, and that, and I'm not trying to like toot a horn or anything, but people that listen to the podcast know that I've been talking about wanting to do yeah. this bike for you know the better part of four years. Yeah. So, um, I think and Justin's has changed a couple of times, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that as as the tour kind of kicked off and started to get legs, and especially when people, you start seeing, it, like I said earlier, you start seeing other people's updates through the, whether it's the post or the chat, yeah. it, it makes you step up and want to do more. Yeah, my, mine has definitely, uh, mine's definitely moved a long way from what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I, I brought my frame with me from the UK with the, the goal of building a visitor's bike so that when people came over, Mm-hmm. We could go riding. Um, so, you know, it was going to be twin cam, narrow bike, similar to my orange bike for ripping around on. But then when everyone else started doing some stuff, it was mm-hmm. like, I can't just go with that. Because yeah. otherwise, what am I doing? I'm building a stock, you know, well, yeah, that's a good thing looking that's stock bike. And it's that's not what the FXR tool is, in my opinion. Well, yeah, that's what's hard about it, right? That's what's hard about the whole situation because – even like, you know, like just kind of the the emails that we got when we kicked off for the garage builder yeah. stuff, some of the guys were like and I don't I don't say, I'm not saying this trying to clown on them. I'm just saying no, like no, for no. for you know just just for the knowledge of it. Some guys were like, This is the FXR, it was almost done. They were yeah. waiting on a set of bars and an exhaust and they wanted to be the garage builder. Yeah. Meaning their bike was gonna be done in like two weeks. You know, yeah, so a lot of and that could have been our fault for not really it like laying out the parameters of what we're doing we had people that were uh i think the other guy that was kind of high on my list that wanted to pick was the hoggish dude chandler yeah yeah and he has a great idea for what he wants to do and i hope that you know like i said we're me and justin have been kicking away kicking around ideas of how to go about next year's uh and that's the thing next year yeah. next year is going to be good i'm looking forward to next year i mean i'm obviously there's no involvement there for me i suppose but it's like to see it roll out because like we said earlier these guys have got the the, the mark has been set so they know what they've got to aim for at mm-hmm. least and then with uh, you and justin in the background being able to run everything without worrying about building a yeah yeah a bike yeah the involvement that i want to have next year it, it's similar to what i've done this year but i really want to handle i want to create more media for it yeah but i got to find a way to make that financially work yeah. Not not saying that like I need money from this or anything, no, but, but I need to find a way to j- like cover the cost of what it would take to go to your shop yeah. and video you. It's a, it's a big thing. Yeah. It's not. You so know. we're fi- um, we're figuring that Justin's supposed to be the money guy behind this as far right. as figuring out how to get paid. I just know how to make shit fun and cool yeah, and, yeah. and uh, interesting. But yeah. yeah, we've been kicking around the ideas of how to go about it. You know, we thought about getting every builder to pick. Yeah they're like to be the one that picks the next yeah. successor to their spot i mean are, are you that f- takes away that takes away the scrutiny from us yeah yeah you know are you because f- are you, have you have you thrown any names out there have you <sighs> not not no just you know. justin and i have both kicked around ideas of people we would like to to build um joe kid yeah joe kid needs to get involved yeah if he can build a bike for 10 months can't do it in four months and yeah, be done with it and yeah, take it yeah, to the east coast yeah it has to be a project that yeah. you spend the year on. Um, we talked about that on the podcast that we did together. He's I know Joe Kidd's capable of building something crazy. Yeah. It's he's also a run and gun guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah, he can commit to one bike, 
I know he can do everything else. I know he can commit to the writing, yeah. to the to the Is involvement. He, I think he he uh, I think on his podcast uh, that you did, he was saying that he's got something. Up he's his got an idea that, that would be badass. Yeah. Don't um, get me wrong. Like, I'd be definitely. In, I'd definitely be interested to know what that is because... But, you know, that, that's... Okay. That's, aside from Joe Kidd, I mean, talking about the already thick, good dudes in the FXR yeah. world. Yeah, so I... so. But... I don't want to burn any bridges Custom bikes, here. though. Yeah, I don't want to burn any bridges here because there's some guys that I love their bikes. So, like, Chris... Chris Harry? Harry. Yeah. He builds a fucking immaculate bike. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he likes the uh, the the stock uh, rest, not the resto mod. Like a, you, it's you, kind of a resto mod. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But I mean, but the quality of them. That's the style of bike that I think is very yeah. popular right now within the FXR community. Right. Is that that more modified factory? You know, like yeah. just a couple parts added to a an original paint job yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And and that's cool. That that's a that is a place for that. But if you put ten of those bikes yeah, on it's, a, on it's a ten month tour, it doesn't create enough hype, and it, it's not pushing the boundaries. It's not quite the same of, it's not no, the I quite agree. same thing that yeah. we're trying to create yeah. within the tour. Yeah. We're trying to have people build bikes that are outside of the normal things that you would see at an East Coast Jam, a West Coast yeah, yeah, Jam, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sturgis Place, yeah. or yeah. whatever. You know, like there, dude. There's a there's so many amazing, beautiful, well put together RTs, RPs. Yeah. You know, low riders, uh, Liberty editions, all these. There's, there's so many of those. Yeah, TPJ's done one. Yeah, <laughs> but how do you, how do you, you know, whoever you are, yeah. the the biggest names in the FXR game, how do you put yourself on this level to build a bike like FXR division is doing right now? Yeah, I mean that's or, so that's yeah, saying about saying about who we're excited about. Yeah, FXR division's bike, just that swing arm setup. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, what. You, that's, <laughs> When you think about like the bikes that were built on the biker build off days, these weren't like no, it Billy wasn't. Lane's I hubless. mean, everything was everybody was yeah. Billy Lane's hubless, you know, uh, these iconic bikes. Ke- uh, even Kendall Johnson's with I his can't, stupid motors. I'll take I'll take the heat for this. I just can't see the FXR tour being a bunch of restored bikes. No, it can't be. It no, can't no, be no, no. that. And no, because and it doesn't need to be because because uh, the East Coast Jam and the West Coast Jam they do that. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to take off their plate either. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah, I want. Uh, I mean, like like I said, it, it's it's weird because when people see FXR, which everybody that's really into FXRs knows how how wide the range of FXR style bikes there are. I mean, yeah. when I got into the FXR thing, the the style was club style. Everybody yeah. was in a club yeah, style. Yeah, yeah look with the the fxr and then it evolved into this more factory paint set um windshield yep no fairing kind of yep. thing it's, there's a place for that and i'm not hating on any of that shit not calling it shit like it's shit i'm no, just I saying know, know. as a as yeah. a thing but you know when i when i think of like my first year ever going to the fxr show there was bikes in there that were you know danny d's bike he's green one so he's uh, green one fuck I mean, there's, there's. I've, I've taken a lot of inspiration from that bike. I mean, Trask built a fucking insane that same year. Trask did a, a 140, was it 141 140, SNS? 143, twin 140, cam. Yeah, yeah, twin cam FXR blown with their big. I saw that actually in the. They had that out in Daytona. Yeah. In March on their stand. Thing is insane. Yeah. That's yeah. the. We're trying to build something on that level so that if you are a builder on this. Or you are the garage guy that gets yeah. picked by the other builders. Yeah. So I was gonna, I was gonna, bring yeah. out, I was gonna say Danny D. I'd love to. And I actually asked him in the week. I said I didn't ask him about FXR tour, but I said, would you ever build another bike? Just, just to see what he said. Mm. He said, oh, I'd never say never. Yeah. Because that uh, green FXR of his. Yeah. So that's kind of the, one of the deals. Is that you know, I think, you know, I ha- I have a list of people that I think would be that would come into it and create interesting storylines. Yep. You know, cause I, I'm the, I'm the marketing and media side of yeah, it, right? Yeah. I got to find a way to yeah. bring attention towards it and to, and to uh, use that attention to benefit the builders and the, and the whole organization of what we're trying to create. Yeah. Right. And in doing so, you have to have attention, Yeah, of course. you know, but I, I want to create attention by, by the same qualities that we talked about earlier, not shit talking, not yeah. not uh, negative team, things camaraderie locker room type yeah type feel 
So finding a group of people that are different to where you're not going to see, like to put it like this, like I think that maybe there should be another builder in there that is more known for their paint work than anything else. Yeah. Maybe there should be another person that's more known as machining than anything else. Maybe there should be a, a body or not a body, but like a, a, a mechanic style person yeah. in there. And you have these different kind of like more niches in which they kind of uh, okay, specialize yeah. in. Yeah. And you bring different styles of bikes, I think naturally through yeah. it. Um, and also like there's parts of me, like, I don't know if it'll happen both on us, our side or even on the other side of them accepting. I would love to see like uh, Ryan Cruzy build a bike. Oh man. Like he hates yeah. FXRs. He's, he, he, uh, he's good for the industry. He is. I think. Yeah. Because well, I think it'd be, I mean, he, he's capable of, of fabricating some things. So I think that if, yeah. if he saw, if, if he saw the level in which was going to be, with, with, which exists within this FXR tour, and he was to try to figure out how to achieve that through his own skills or, or he, resources. He can do it. With his shit talking and antics of not being an FXR fan. Yeah. I think it would bring so much more attention towards the whole thing yeah. from a newer generation of bikers that don't know shit about FXRs. Yeah. Because all these dudes that watch him that are yeah. willy fucking nerds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's, yeah. Have him be like, okay, show us what you want in an FXR. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So. So it's it like I I have a handful of picks of people that I know would bring a lot to the table if they took it seriously and yeah. they committed. Um, Justin has a handful of picks that he wants, but that's where it kind of comes into this weird place. Is that a lot of the picks that w we have they're not traditional FXR people. They're people that are kind of capable of it, but that's kind of the interesting thing is to get somebody who maybe likes FXRs or, or, or dabbles in them or fucks with them, but has a style. Yeah. They're bringing something new to FXRs yeah. instead of the same thing. Yeah. So that's why we're in such a like a weird predicament where, you know, the FXR community expects their FXR heroes to be on the pedestal, right? Yeah. But the show that we're trying to produce is about bringing something new to the table. Yeah. And if those I mean if there was like some commitments from these guys to do something outside the box to create hype to do yeah, that be, then yeah for sure but yeah. yeah it'd be nice to you know joe or chris or one of the traditional fxr guys that yeah. you know it, to do something different yeah to do something yeah because I, I mean it's like what i was talking about earlier with my performance bagger stuff like i've found the perfect way to ride these bikes for yeah. me yeah and it's hard to stray from that yeah and you got guys like joe who's almost owned every fxr in america <laughs> who has a fucking oh, kit right. How do yeah, you? Yeah. I'm not yeah, saying he yeah, can't. He has a, a go-to. And I'm this, not this saying that this. Joe's not going to be a part of this. I'm just saying yeah. that that I'm just trying to help people understand where the thought process process is on this side of the table to try to create an event that's going to uh, last more than one year. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. I think you're on the right right path. Yeah, because it's and build it. I don't want to, I don't, you know, me and Justin kind of argued about this a little bit. I don't want to just pick people that's had every opportunity given no, to no. them in FX, in, in custom yeah, motorcycles. You, yeah, you almost, you you need someone that's got some clout somewhere. Yeah. Just to, to attention. create the, in, yeah. the interest and attention. But, you know, I'm not, this is not to put him down at all because I think he's amazing. But like Clem, like you're saying, he's, he's flown under the radar. Yeah. For so long. Um, you need someone like that. Yeah. And, Bring those people in and give I mean, them shine the light on them. Yeah, think about it, Rennie. Um, yeah, Rennie is, is you know, especially here in Texas. He's been a part of a lot of things that we do from yeah. the campouts and ridden. He's ridden Sturgis with us, things like that. But he's building. I mean, he he's literally. A lot of us have been on like, well, we can't wait to see what he does. Rennie's never I built know. a bike like this before, so somebody that would never have gotten this yeah. opportunity is almost like creating one of the most interesting yeah. things. You which know what I, I mean? Which I find funny because he's he's handled it quite well, really. I mean, yeah. I know I know he's uh, at the moment he's maybe working twenty five hours out of twenty four. Yeah, but, but you know he's, he's actually, trying to figure out how to make it all yeah, work. You know, yeah. he's made he's made his his video bit work. He's put out some good videos. He's put out you know some good good little midweek. He does quite a few stories. For, yeah, you know, 
he's he's carried it along. He's good in the in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have said it was his first, fra what just his first frame up or. or I mean, he's he's restored some bikes and yeah. things like that. But as far as customizing a bike to this level, yeah, for sure not. You know, not. and I, I mean, to be fair, like I've I hate bringing up my big wheel bagger days, but my big wheel bagger days were a lot more of this type of shit that I have yeah. downstairs versus what I've done for the last eight years. Yeah. You know where. The FXR that I did before was more, that's a f mainly factory FXR with a cu yep. couple of custom parts on it, recoded versus the baggers we used to do were all handmade fiberglass and epoxy yeah. and plastic and metal. And, you know, it was much different, much more complicated. It's more creative. It was way more creative. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there, that, that world lent itself to go outside of the boxes a little bit more. It's yeah. just, that's also what kind of, destroyed it because yeah. people went so far out of those boxes it became unrideable un unpractical yeah impractical I mean, yeah, the fxr is such a is such a loved bike that that people um expect it to be a certain way you know they expect it to be uh, that's why i have not been on facebook chats at yeah, all yeah, about it yeah because so, i don't want to hear their shit well, i do look forward to seeing how it evolves because you've got the st fairing now that, that's going to go on an FXR. Um, you've got Saddleman with their yeah, they're, they're small sh shorter RTRB. RTs. Yeah, um, you know, there's there's fairing options, there's bag options. I, I think we might have talked about it earlier uh, off air, but I think, and I'll go on record right now saying that I think that what you're going to see in the FXR world over the next couple of years, for sure, next year more, you're going to see more FXR choppers and a oh, lot think more so. M8 FXRs. Yeah, I, I think, think so. that now that the code's been kind of cracked and kind of done a few different yep. ways now with M8 FXRs. And now that there's more of those motor platforms used on the market, yep. you're going to see a there's, lot more of those. There's resources to pull from. There's information yeah. to pull from. It's like when these guys, I mean, we had a couple of guys in the UK that have done them, um, you know, and, and I know that Justin's spoken to them and, you know, yeah, so everyone, yeah. everyone that's done one has spoken to someone because yeah. there's only a handful, Yeah, you know, but now that code has been cracked, like you say, and the other thing about chopping up FXR frames, there's a lot of FXR frames out there that are that the only thing that's going to save them is chopping them. Yeah, so so I, might I, as well I've you know had, put yeah, those back to use. I've had this conversation a few times, and as much as these bikes, uh, I think all of them maybe only Pauls did Paul start no Paul started with a complete bike, but then kept it as a complete bike, didn't he? Because it was too good to mm, something like chop, that, yeah. I think. So other, I, I think all of these were frames yeah you know so mine was mine was definitely 100 percent a frame mm -hmm. um to the point of funnily enough it was a european frame because it has a steering lock that extrudes from the frame on the left front left hand side which you don't have we have some of the ones that the loop um, that you put a lock in no it's a it's like a barrel oh okay no yeah. we don't have that so which was made for the european market and mm. uh danny d pointed it out to me i didn't think anything of it and then when i come to fit um my fairing bracket it's like it's not going to go on there because the lock's in the way. So which didn't matter because I wasn't using it, so I'll just cut it off, weld mm -hmm. it up, and. But yeah, so so all of these bikes have been frames. They're not. Yeah. We're not killing good FXRs out there, people. Yeah, and, and I'm sure Rennie's talked about it, but he kind of got a lot of hate when he was beaten in the tank. Yeah. But the other side <laughs> of the tank was already fucked was already up. Smashed. You know, yeah. but the thing is that like him doing that and and. Bless these old FXR nerds' hearts. The purists, yeah. Um, what they're what they're uh, what they're not understanding is that when they start commenting and talking shit about that online, it makes more people see it. Yeah, it draws more attention to yeah. it, and that's kind of why Rennie did that. Is right. that unfortunately a man. Dra drama? Yeah, drama sells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like I know that I'm not trying to be a hypocrite right now and say that we don't want to have all this drama. I think it was more in in, in lightheartedness and and, yeah. and good fun. It wasn't like it's it's, it's drama on a. It's, it's not, somebody else's it's drama. Not us having it's drama. not us drama. It's it's yeah. Because I mean, own fun. I know for a fact some some people hate the fact that we chopped the frame. Right. But at the same time, if if I mean, okay. if you watch our videos that we did on it, the frame was pretty fucked. Yeah, the amount of work you did just to get the fender rails and stuff. Yeah, sorted redone. Out. Yeah. So. You know, it wasn't like it was an immaculate RP. Someone yeah. had already chopped the neck and wedged it out to rake it. Yeah. Yeah, when I was sandblasting it, seeing all the body filler, I was like, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. so fun. 
<laughs> so, you know, in, in my opinion, we did that frame of service. And yeah. the other thing is that, like, a lot of people uh, have said, you know, which which I agree to. And that's why we, we Corey and I have gone, Corey and I have gone through such measures of staring and looking to find a way to kind of curb all the the things that's kind of circled the FXR chopper, the the tall FXR yeah. chopper stuff, is that you'd always have something that just wasn't right. And I'm not trying to speak some, from some high mountain of like we figured it out, but I feel like we've we've I feel like we have. But it's yeah. all gonna you know it's gonna matter when it's all said and done. It's sitting out there and I'm riding it. Yeah, I think when when the people see it and people see it on the road. Yeah, well, I'll know for sure. I was like, yes, we solved it, or you know what? Now that sticks out, and I, I'll be honest, I, I'll be yeah. an open book whenever it comes that time. If if something on this bike, str- like stance wise, does not totally like do it for me, I'll, yeah. I'll tell people. I'll be like, yeah. you know what? I loved everything, but this right here just I can't get past it. Yeah. But well, you're going to. I heard you saying that you're going to ride it next year. So as your yeah. as your bike so you're going to find that so out. i'm getting rid of all my other bikes it's right. the only bike i have and it's the most impractical thing to do for traveling is to go from a full bagger yeah fairing and bags we found it hard going to the st right it was harder going to the st but made for a funner trip because i had to be more methodical on how i was going to do things and yeah. now it's like anything it's like sometimes when you accumulate sometimes the freeing nature is to is to get rid of yeah and so traveling uh, I'm finding that I'm more interested in how less I can take versus how much I can take. Yeah. Um, it, cause it just changes the experience on the trip. Now the hard part is that I can't take less gear like camera stuff. Cause yeah, on this trip I want to do, I need, I need to do podcasts I need to make videos I need to take pictures. So I need all that equipment, but I probably don't need as much clothing yep. and I probably won't need any real weather gear other uh, than maybe a rain suit. Uh, but yeah, I want to do things like that. Like I want to, I want to. Sometimes making it harder is making it funner. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's. How can I do this with the least amount of, you know, input? Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, it's toothbrush, pair of socks. Exactly. It, it it kind of, it creates a different experience by, throwing a wrench in the mix or a spanner in. Yeah, in yeah the mix. A spanner. Yeah, it just doesn't sound <laughs> as cool. Uh, Spanner sounds cool in certain aspects, but not yeah. not we all, in that. We we also use that as a derogatory term. Uh-huh. So if you call someone a spanner, uh-huh. it's like you know you're a dickhead or you're a wally. <laughs> yeah. Those also sound cute, a wally. <laughs> um, no, but like yeah. I said, I, I'm I'm at a point now, and this is what I, I think we were talking about earlier, and we'll we'll start wrapping it up to. Uh, you got to be honest with yourself and before you burn out on motorcycles you got to be willing to look at things and start making changes to keep it fun and keep it interesting yeah and burnout happens for everybody on every level of motorcycling or in any anything you do but when you start to feel it you got to you got to course correct you yeah. got to start find you got to start stripping away the things that are making you burnt out and look for the things that that re and relight the passion yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah definitely so, definitely well Ashley, thanks for coming. This, I, thanks I for having me. How long did we go? Uh, this is two and a half, basically. Okay. All right. Yeah, we did Sorry, good. Man. I've been trying to do real good and keeping them under yeah, three cool. hours. Yeah, yeah, um, But I, yeah. I don't know if it's – maybe it's just the FXR tour and the heat from it right now, but yeah. the last handful of podcasts have just been so well, – I, I mean, I've, I think there'll be stuff that we go away from and we'll talk about when we yeah. leave here. Yeah. You know, oh, it's yeah. going to be gold. For sure. So well, We got bike night to good. go to now yeah. and, and all yeah, that good stoked. stuff. and. I'm going to try not to get drunk in front of you, but I'm definitely having a beer tonight. I'm stoked to be in Texas, so <laughs> you knock yourself out. All right. Well, uh, Unit 6 Customs yeah. on Instagram, which we didn't yeah. even talk about how that came about, but we'll do another podcast. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, yeah, come and see me at um, Castor Customs or uh, Old School Holly Davidson. I'll be there. You can physically come and uh, nice. chat. Oh, yeah, um, and that's in a... That's Ellington. Ellington. In Connecticut, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so, uh, no, thanks for having me. All right, well, we'll see you guys in Durango. And yeah, you will. Actually, today we'll see two.